Oh, yeah. We don't acknowledge chat. I think that's what you were going with. Yeah. Yeah, we exactly. don't acknowledge chat. That's right. But, oh, and if you do have something that you comment, please tell us what it was about. Like, just say, like, as in, yeah, I agree, that sucked. And then, I don't know, Rick Moranis getting punched. Like, yeah, let us know. Let us know what it is. So when we go back and read chat at the end, we can please respond. That's right. Appropriately. Let's go. Hmm. Is that right? Like, having that little bit up the top there in the... Already there? Yeah, it records over the top of it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's fine. I was just checking. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Two's Company, Three's a Podcast, Newcastle's number one self-proclaimed film, TV, and gaming podcast. My name is Dylan, and as always, with my co-host, Mitchell, and we're heading back to the 70s and getting ourselves a nice fa- Fiat family car because it's time for 2C3 Pod, German Tiger Heavy Tank! Bunge of Steel. Oh, Sean Connery in something rather. Ooh. It's not? Bunge of Steel. Bunge of Steel has got to be Sean Connery in something. No, it's It's Mel Gibson impersonating Sean Connery in What what? Women Want in the year 2000. Yeah, what what women want. (laughs) Ha I pranked you. That, you did. You you done a one over on me. Oh, anyway, I done did it. That, what women want? Yes, is a great movie. It is a great movie. It's a it's... weird romantic comedy starring Mel Gibson in mm. his prime when he started to mm-hmm. like tip over to that kind of older sort of character. Essentially, like he was in like his late forties, mm. maybe or mid to late forties. No, he I reckon like he would have been late thirties, dude. You reckon? Yeah, hundred no, like, percent. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, maybe I don't remember it as much as I oh, thought. Wait, I did. Maybe anyway. not because he'd be like sixty now. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, he's hey, old. That's right. Yeah, anyway. I'm young. That's, <laughs> shut up, man. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's a great movie. Mm. Welcome, everybody, to another episode, 131 episode of mm. Two's Company, Three's a Podcast. Mm. We have a rip-roaring episode to get into first, but we've already said our names. I don't know why we repeat them at the beginning of every episode twice. So I don't. Get, I, I know, I do. So <laughs> getting, st- getting straight into the m- intro mild chat that we label it as. It's homework, bro. It is homework, bro. It's homework. It is homework, bro. <laughs> We went to New Zealand for a second. Fush anyway, and chips. F- <laughs> That's all I've got. I can't do anything else. It's fine. You can certainly check out this podcast's social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram. And Twitter is still there. Last time we released a podcast, I talked about how I was going to delete it. Yes. But I thought, you know what? I'll keep it there if in case anybody steals it. Not that they uh, will, but yep. if somehow this grows oh, and we need it again, uh, I'm just going to keep it where it is. Oh, yeah. No, that's fair. But it's inactive. It's but inactive. go over there and give it some love. That's Why right. Not? It'll- but- if you're looking at giving it some love, giving some love, yeah, feel free to check out the podcast on your favorite platform, wherever That's that right. is, and leaving a review, some feedback, a comment, five stars, all of that jazz. And if you do it on Apple Podcasts, we will read that review out on air if you so wish. That's right. But we do have a cliche slogan, of course. We're available on Podbean, Spotify, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts and of course YouTube. Big, big small blowout. blowout. Now you can certainly as well support us additionally from just listening into this podcast mm. by also supporting us over at T Public and Redbubble.com. We have yes, a small indeed. Bit of merchandise you can buy over there. T shirts, a little bit, a little bit, a couple of fridges, t shirts and stuff, and you know, household appliances as normal. Yeah, exactly. But most importantly, as well, you can certainly support us over on Patreon. That's right. And you can find us on Patreon, Redbubble, and T Public just by searching 2C3 Pod, simple as that. But Patreon will get you so much bonus goodies and most importantly, a shout out, yeah. which we will get to to our lovely producers, heroes, and bloody legends at the end of the show. So stick around for that. That's right. But, but because we've had one week hiatus, we've mm. actually got quite a lot to get through. Now, not oh, saying yes, that do. we've banked up. No. Uh, no, no, no. We've just kept a few things in the bank that we wanted mm. to touch over, but we do have a lot to get mm. through. Exactly. Um, but still, we're heading towards the end of the year 2020, and mm. things are still fairly slow in the world of TV and film, but things are still happening. <laughs> Things are happening and it, it, it's slow in the sense that we're not getting like, oh, breaking news, Academy Award winner, blah, 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 is starring in, like, n- n- there's That's no right. big casting news, nothing like that. It's all just odd little tidbits happening around Hollywood right now. So we're going to sprinkle through some of those and I'm sure we'll get lost in some rabbit holes along the way. That's right. Now, mm. f- for those who do keep up with Hollywood gossip, essentially, and film TV and essentially gaming news, essentially. he said, she said. What we may talk about might be a little bit left field because we pick out the articles and the things that we've recognized that we find uh, interesting to talk about amongst ourselves. Exactly, that's right. So come to this podcast Mm. if you're new for the things that are a little bit outside of what you may hear Mm. everywhere else. But first off the list, we always talk about horror. Almost almost every week we talk about horror in Mm. some aspect. And we've got two points to talk about horror in this week. But first off the list is an actor who is always good in everything 
but always leans towards romantic comedy dramas. Exactly. And occasionally steps into the realm of comedy or action, very mm. rarely, but yes. knocks it out of the park when he does. Absolutely. A very high caliber actor. One, uh, Colin Firth. Colin Firth. And he is looking to star in a new zombie comedy. Yes. Entitled New York Will Eat You Alive, based on a popular Chinese comic, Zombie Brother. Zombie Brother, that's mm. right. So I don't know anything about Zombie Brother, but it makes me intrigued to mm. find out more about it. Absolutely. But mm. usually American adaptations of classic uh, Japanese or Chinese horror-themed things are mm. usually pretty dog shit. Yeah. But the fact that this is going to be a comedy and not a straight-up adaptation like Quarantine or The, the Grudge or exactly, whatever- Exactly, like a shot-for-shot shot remake. That's not, right. Yeah. This is going to be essentially, from my understanding, well, its own thing. And Colin Firth, yes, he is getting on, but he, I reckon he's still going to bring his A-game in this. I, th I, I oh, think this is going to be wonderful. I think this could be the perfect crossover in that sense with his serious style of acting, coupling perfect, and being like a very dry humour into a zombie comedy. I yeah. expect that dry humour that he is known for with those little one-liners in his more serious films. Yeah. But bringing that into that and having blood and guts around and all of that and running for his life, I feel like that's going to be like a, mwah, a perfect combination yeah. there. And it's been a mm. while since I've seen a, a zombie comedy or a new zombie comedy that yeah. I've over overtly enjoyed. That's the right. last yeah. one that I can think of from memory that came out was mm. Zombieland 2. And yeah. obviously the first one was good. The second one was like, ah, it's just the same thing. No, exactly. And if it wasn't for the uh, the notion that it was the sequel to something we already knew, we yeah. probably wouldn't have enjoyed Zombieland 2 at all. That's but right. Because we knew the characters and the story and where it was kind of going, that kind of thing, we could have a good time with it. That's but right. I think I think you're right in the sense that probably Zombieland was probably the last really enjoyable um, horror comedy. Oh, zombie comedy. Zombie comedy. comedy. Zombity. Zombity. There's been plenty of horror comedies that we've recently oh, enjoyed. We've absolutely. talked about that on YouTube. Go to YouTube. Oh, yeah, we did. Pod. That's right. Yes. Um, but yeah, so looking at the mm. film as a whole, New York Will Eat You Alive. Long title, but classic, and I love it. Yes. Um, it's also got a screen by, screenplay penned by Alex Rubens and produced by Channing Tatum. So oh Channing Tatum gosh, stepping into yes. the producing. Yes, getting um, that PGA. I love to see it. Yeah. I love, uh, uh, we discuss it all the time, but I, I, we absolutely love seeing those big names taking a dabble at producing and being behind the scenes and That's doing right. that. Because being in front of the camera, they've seen all of this for the last 10, 20 years, however long they've been in the industry and they've yep. got first-hand experience. Why can't they just translate to that? position themselves that's like, right do that and, and it's cool yeah. to see like what i like i think the thing that it just hit me but the thing the reason that i really like the idea of actors becoming producers themselves mm. is that you always hear about these producers and how scummy they can be and what they do to get people in films there's a yeah. bad history mm. but it's almost oh, Einstein. <laughs> sorry yeah it's almost when you when you the find out about one. an actor <laughs> blah, 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 when you find out about an actor moving into a producer credit some people may look at this and go we'll leave the producing up to the producers but producing mm. has a history of scum and villainy yeah so yeah. it's almost like hiring the next in line it's like yeah. going to fast food and seeing the person who was working the counter one day become the manager yes you know they've yeah. earned that mm. they've started at the bottom and they're working their way up and mm. obviously becoming a producer is a pretty big deal it, to them I would assume I don't yeah. know I've never been one no that's but then what, also well, obviously directing their own creations as well and then going from there that's right there seems to be a creative uh insight as to yes it's all fun and games to play a character in somebody else's film mm. but it's it's all it's a it's a, its own thing entirely mm. to create your own story and bring that to life with people playing those characters yes absolutely you know? so from the perspective of actor versus producer slash director mm. Channing Tatum yes still fairly young but plenty of experience in the in the oh, industry yeah. especially with comedies absolutely that's I'm right I'm down for this no 100% that's right and all of those combinations and then you add in the fact that you've got Colin Firth Oscar winner yeah. you know like jumping into a, zomb a zombie yep. which yeah no all of this I am more than keen for I, I particularly as you mentioned the title just New York will eat you alive I love that because yeah. it's like a, a play on the old like you know story about New York that it will eat you alive it like, reminds me of ha, 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 um, but now it's actually going to eat you alive ha ha ha, ha, ha. yeah exactly the, the title kind of mm. reminds me of like a 70s or 80s film exactly, like they live yeah. or escape the from thing New York from outer space or killer clowns from outer space oh, you great, know like great movie exactly but like yeah, yeah those those 
titles that are uh, uh, longer than needed, but explains it perfectly. That's you know, right. that kind of thing. You yeah, know, for sure. Exactly. Unlike like modern films where they try to be a bit more snappy, like haba, like freaky. You know, like yeah. we just reviewed on YouTube. Like those kind right. of quick titles. Yeah, for mm. sure. But yes, Colin Firth, mm. we're both huge fans of. Yes. We like the idea of zombies, zombie comedies. Yes. when they're done right. Yep. And, you know, as long as the jokes are all, they hit our perspective well, then they're, they're right. good films. And I feel know? like they'll be, you know, uh, very high, high, high level comedy. Oh, of mm. course. Yes, yes, for exactly. intelligent people like ourselves. There will be no fannying about with the humour. No mm. fannying about at all. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Speaking of fannying about, about humour, that's moving mm. on to Alan Ruck has an idea for a possible sequel to Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Now, before everybody I was gets super say, yes, excited, please. this isn't actually happening. Mm-hmm. Somebody just asked him one day randomly in an interview mm. somewhere, what would you think would be a cool idea? Mm. How and would was you like, do it? What, well, this is an idea, and well, that's all this is. So don't get your that's panties exactly in a right. bunch. Now, you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Have I you? have, but not for a very long okay, time. And yes. I'm not as yeah. big of a fan of it as like, I mean, if I rewatched mm. it, I'd probably get it. Yeah. But I know that it's had its influence on modern mm. pop culture ever since. Oh, absolutely. It and was- I understand that it's a huge film and people love it. So yeah. to me, looking back at it in the time frame, it was one of the first movies movies to be like uh, very self-aware of it, like uh, self-aware. <laughs> I don't know. I'm self-aware of itself. Yes. I don't need to say that because I've just prefaced that. Yeah. But yeah, no, it, it really did uh, kind of uh, spawn a new type of comedy where it was very self-aware and yeah. almost meta before yep. meta was a thing. So to me, it is a classic. I absolutely love the murderous Matthew Broderick. He kills that role. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, he just down. steamrolls I it all the time. Yeah. Just, yeah, he just ran over the top of the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> but Alan Ruck was perfect in it as well. And as you said, complete speculation. Well, not even speculation. It is purely just a comment of like, that would be fun. Yeah. But basically, more or less, he has said that he could, he, he would, he would be on board for Ferris Bueller's Day Off 2 if they- were at a retirement home and that yeah. was the location which i think would be brilliant yeah because given the age of these actors it's p- possible that they would be ready for a retirement home or in another five years or so yep. and not only that they need a day off from the retirement home so they basically escape from there i love the first one being yeah. in a high school and they want the day off from school they want the day off from the home you know what it, this it really shows perfectly. to me though that there wasn't like a a bad sequel that was made like in between that That's and right. this new idea, where they could make a direct sequel, which is a direct sequel, not bypassing any other events. The, so the first one came out in 1986. You could have easily gone in 1990 and had them have a day off from college. Yeah, for sure. They could have easily done that and done a cash grab, but they didn't. In because- saying that too, like, imagine that idea. Oh, sorry, we're not. We'd, we're we're going to take a day off college. The college professors would have been like... All right. No, they, they wouldn't have even fucking noticed. They, 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 they live in dorms. They don't have to turn up for class. Yeah, they, they just don't. get marked absent. That's right. Well, <laughs> when it's not a university scheme to get out like they had to. That's right. When mm. I remember back from uni, they didn't even take roll call. So if you showed up or if you oh. didn't show up, that's on you. Yes, like, exactly. If you fail, it's because you're not here. Exactly. Um, Simple. In saying that, with the idea of Ferris Bueller's day off being set in a nursing home, how they have to escape, didn't we review something in Trailer Park fairly recently- about that exact same premise, but it was with never other too dudes. late, I think, or no, ne- never too old and never too late. I think it was never too late. An Australian comedy with Australian uh, comedy. Kenny, uh, Sh- Shane Jacobson, yeah, yeah. and um, uh, uh, the Rain- dude, the dude from Babe Pig in the City and yes. Star Trek: First Contact, right. and yeah. all of those films, and Spider Man Three, yeah. and, and I can never remember his name. No, exactly, yeah. that's right. But yeah, no, you're completely right in the sense that that film revolved around three or four older gentlemen. They just wanted a day out of the retirement home yeah. to spend some time with family men bridges and stuff because they're all going to you know yeah. die soon because they're old as fuck so yes that's been done but on a small australian scale that's if it's right. Ferris Bueller's day off too yeah i mean be fuck. Big. Yeah. exactly like that would actually be a significant deal so yeah for sure I-, I would love for that to happen but as you prefaced at the top of this article complete random comment by him yep but not even speculation not a word of it nothing assigned to it yep it's just literally that'd be fun well hollywood i know you're listening <laughs> I know, like, you may have heard about mm-hmm. this article, but we're spreading the word, man. Like, uh, uh, I'll happily pen the script. I am the award-winning writer of Killer Borough coming soon right. to <laughs> 2 c 3 on YouTube. Yeah. Shh, it's a secret. That's but right. I'll tell you first. Yeah, speaking mm. about telling people first, hot yes. scoop or shot oh. of poop. Uh, anybody who would be familiar with, um, what are they called? Please justify that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm waiting. Ah, the Weekly Planet podcast. No. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Johnny Depp is leaving <laughs> Fantastic Beasts 3. Oh, no. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, so After anybody- the underwhelming performance in number two? 
I don't give a shit. That's right. I've already so, expressed my opinions about him. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Playing as Grindelwald, yes. essentially, he kind mm. of pissed off everybody by revealing at the end of Fantastic Beasts 1 that mm. I think the original- Was he played by- It was Colin- Colin Farrell, and then he, like, yeah. transformed into Grindelwald or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, no, it's Johnny Depp in makeup, and everyone kind of went, oh. Yeah. You know, like, Johnny Depp is known mm. for his character acting into crazy, weird sort mm. of characters, like, you know, Jack- um, what's his name? Jack Sparrow and Grindelwald, of course, and those kind of- like, Remember Edwards- that big hit, um, The Lone Ranger? Oh, a massive, massive hit. hit. Yeah, yeah, he absolutely. played Tonto. That's crazy right. good. Of course, yeah. Mm. Uh, even Edward Scissorhands. It goes all the way back that far. Okay, that's Wait, good. You still with us? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. That's good, though. Edward Scissorhands. That was a great performance. Great movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Fantastic movie. But then when you make a career out of putting on a costume and acting the same, <laughs> I, 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 I yeah. very much don't have any- appeal to Johnny Depp's performances. Yeah. I didn't no, mind fair. Sweeney Todd, but again, it's a musical, so take it or leave it. That's the right. Blood, the blood didn't justify the music. I left <laughs> that movie hard, like, within five minutes. I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't know it was a musical. And then we put it on, I was like- Sweeney Todd, <laughs> the demon barber of Fleet Street. Yeah. And it's all about cutting people's throats and stuff. And there was not enough blood to justify the amount of fucking songs I had to sit through. Okay. I'm yeah, just saying. Fair like, enough. Yeah, exactly. Even, like, The Greatest Showman probably had more blood. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Period. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so Johnny Depp is leaving. That was fucking great. It was good. <laughs> Johnny Depp is leaving Fantastic Beast 3 mm-hmm. as the character of Grindelwald after all of these ongoing yeah. lawsuits and things about mm-hmm. his ex-wife and what's happening there. It's just got too caught up. And He's Warner got a Brothers, lot of personal shit going on. That's right. And Warner mm-hmm. Brothers has just decided, you know what? We don't want to yeah. be part of this, which uh, is weird because they're still keeping on Amber Heard for Justice League and sequels. Oh, Aquaman, sorry. No, see, I feel like the difference was, though, that that, uh, his personal life was definitely affecting the film and also the negative reaction to him. I feel like they just wanted an excuse. Yeah. But as far as I can see, they both sat down, both parties, Depp and I assume his management or agent or whatever, and then Warner Brothers, whoever the head is there, they sat down and they just went, nah, and they went, yeah. Yeah. You know, like, it was mutual. Like, dude- we don't want you because you you sucked in that. And then he's like, uh, I don't want to do it because lazy and I already got money. And yeah. they're like, eh? <laughs> but on yeah. the other side of the spectrum mm. as well, mm. in the world of Twitter and online social media mm. and everybody shouting their opinions on the rooftops. Two, three, four, on Twitter. Absolutely. Mm. Um, Amber Heard, mm. his ex-wife that's on the other side of mm. this whole thing. What did Amber hear? <laughs> well, the allegations about getting smacked up oh, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. To put it bluntly, for those who don't know, Amber Heard, which is who who played fuck, I can't even remember her name now. The woman in Aquaman, <gasps> essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that movie has a good seen. character. Yeah, I've for seen sure. Aquaman. Oh, you have seen it. Yeah, you haven't seen I, Justice I saw League. It opening day, Boxing Day. You did. Mm-hmm. Strange. Dog class. Yeah. It was good. But yeah, anyway, Johnny Depp and her mm. were married. They've yes. split up. There's allegations yeah. of abuse on both sides. Of course. Uh, from what I've seen, it seems to be leaning more that the fact that she's got. Kind of crazy. Yeah. But, oh, but, but then you've got Johnny Depp. So ex- who knows? Kind of crazy? Who, yeah. Pff, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, who mm. really knows who hit who? But at the same time, yeah. uh, she's been cast as Mira. That's right. Again, yeah. in the Justice League reshoots and future Aquaman sequels. Mm-hmm. And people are going, well, you've just ruined that movie because people won't see it because of her. Because of this. Ah. Uh, which, it's the like, same- That's like- That's like saying people won't see this because Johnny Depp's in that's, it. That's, that's like six- People fe- will see it. That's like six females and Andy who won't see that film. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, um, no, I don't think that will have any kind of impact well, on I mean, Aquaman people, and Justice League reshoots. I don't think so either, but I don't, I don't think that Johnny Depp leaving would have the same impact either. I think people would still see the film as long as it's a good film. No, exactly. But what I wanted to touch on is the internet speculation of his replacement. Yes. So- so, yeah, please, people do. have been spe- like, regardless of the reasons as to why he's leaving the film, whatever, mm. people weren't so happy with the reception wasn't so warm with him being Grindelwald anyway, because mm. as we mentioned, it's Johnny Depp playing another crazy made up character. That's right. The speculation is he may be being replaced by Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Mikkelsen. Rads Mads Mikkelsen. It's like the sickest name ever, honestly. Fucking right. His his literal name is Mads. Yeah. I'm Mads. That's I'm Mads. 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 I could just see it. he would be perfect in the eighties for MTV. What's up, Mads Mikkelsen? Here, <laughs> I'm gonna do a half pipe jump over this old lady's purse and nuts. <laughs> yeah, let's go Mountain Dew. Mads Mick. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could totally see him being there with um, yeah. But when you Tony see Hawk. him as an actor, he is like mm. such a like a classy kind of. Woo! Woo! 
<laughs> so, anyway, Mads Miko is yeah. like maybe reply, mm. maybe returning to this. Well, mm. not returning. He may be joining this franchise as Grindelwald, and he's a fantastic character actor mm-hmm. as well. I've never really seen him in big fantastical makeup. I've seen him in Hannibal Lecter. I've seen him in Star Wars. I've seen him in many other things before. I immediately recognize him as Hannibal Hannibal from Hannibal, of course. Yeah, exactly. The performance in that was fantastic. No, exactly. And you look at his face and I'm like, I like it. Yep. Like, you know, that that, that will work, you know? So I think that that was perfect. Perfect casting replacement. And honestly, as weird as this sounds, I feel like he would be a more comfortable draw for the box office right now than Johnny Depp. Well, that's, I think that's probably another part of this, you know, yeah, whether, I mean. whether like, he has been chosen or not. Far from a name, he a, would, a big, as big a name, but at the same time, you'd, the appeal, I feel much, like- you, Much more appealing, especially exactly, right now, Exactly, given sure. circumstances. Absolutely. That's mm. right. But people are also saying mm. as well, why not just bring back Colin Farrell? To reprise as Griddlewald, except with a bit of makeup on. Uh, dude, That's right, because he transformed into that. He kind of faded mm. away and it revealed the face underneath. And everyone was yeah. like, ugh, Johnny Depp. Yeah. So and, just bring back Colin Farrell. Went, <gasps> Colin. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I love Colin Farrell. Yeah. Right. I've got nothing bad to say about him. Like, yeah, uh, so uh, either yeah. one, whether it's mm. Mad Miko or mm. oh, Colin Farrell. That's just bring uh, him in. the most recent time we saw him on the big screen, the gentleman. Fucking phenomenal. <gasps> It's fucking phenomenal and because he's playing himself. And it's fucking great. Well, not only that, but the makeup as well. You couldn't, you didn't yeah. really quite tell it was him at first. Yeah, but not with the only glasses that, and that. The Batman makeup. Yeah. The dude can yes. transform. Yes, the penguin. I forgot that's yeah. coming. Oh, yeah. So, either way, Mads Mikkelsen, Colin Farrell, do it. Yeah. Okay. Either way, Hollywood, I know you're still listening. Exactly. That's right. Don't Killer worry about Johnny Depp. Coming it's soon. Fine. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Johnny Depp's on the out. That's fine. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Got no problem with that. Absolutely. But. Anyway, you briefly wanted to touch on the next one, and I'm more than happy to, given the circumstances in the world. Yeah, we'll-, we'll, hmm. we'll And it's the first real big test of this kind of, uh, like, uh, film in mm. this climate. That's right. Mm. So, we reviewed Christopher Nolan's Tenet a mm-hmm. number mm-hmm. of months ago now, Indubitably. essentially being the first big budget blockbuster release after COVID hit. Yes. And essentially- it's essentially testing the waters for big budget blockbuster films. That's right. It yeah. dips it dips its toes in to see, mm-hmm. okay, who's still willing to go to the movies mm. and what kind of success can continue on from, you know, production companies producing big blockbuster films and whether it's really worth it anymore. That's right. Especially while people aren't going to go to the movies and whether they ever will ever again. Mm. You know, obviously us two, we go every weekend for reviews <laughs> because that's our thing. We I went do twice it. within four days. That's and right. Between you and me, I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's right. Like, yeah. So, um, mm. yeah, despite a reported 20 odd million dollar budget for, yeah. for Christopher Nolan's to- Tenet, Sorry, two hundred million. Twi- yes, yes. two hundred million. Sorry, <laughs> twenty. <laughs> twenty million. If they made just- that film for twenty mil, whew, whew, that's that a big is, success. That is impressive. <laughs> yeah. So two hundred yes. million mm. dollar budget, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, they're saying that it still hasn't quite recouped its losses because the, mm. the box office draw was around 350 mil. Yes. So that's not taking into mm. account, obviously, everybody's budgets and everybody's salaries and also um, marketing, advertising. Ad- yes. marketing budgets as Which well. Which this movie was advertised to the fucking moon and back. That's right. But the key figure I take out of that, that 350 that it did end up making, is the yeah. fact that only uh, about- Mm, 52 million came out of the US. That's how dead yeah. the cinema industry is in America with how fucked up the virus is over yeah. there. And like if that, anybody that's was- mind boggling because normally, yeah. um, worldwide, re- like for a film like this, a worldwide release and a domestic US release, they're almost on par mm-hmm. most of the time. You know, that's how big the US market is. So, with how they're looking at this, it doesn't look pretty. Mm. Mm. And if anybody was going to, if any film was going to draw regular cinema mm. viewers in, not just the nerds like you and I, no, exactly, it would yeah. be the next big thing. It would be the big next big Nolan. That's as they right. Call it. They're called Nolans now. Like that, that's what we come to expect. Yeah, so sure. yeah. So it's interesting that um, uh, I've completely blanked on the studio. Was it 20th Century? Uh, yeah. So have why, I. Well, yeah, why, it? why am I blanking on that? I shouldn't be blanking on that. Uh, let's do, have a quick scroll. Do, 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 Warner do, do, Brothers. Do, do. Oh, Warner Brothers, of course. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what we gather from this is that Warner Brothers is not looking at this favorably given the circumstances that's not good that's not appropriate that's not appropriate for the climate that we're in well it's just like any (coughs) typical sales expectations Mm. and targets that are set by any business regardless of what level Mm. you always set the bar a little higher than may be reasonable and if you hit that Mm. then you beauty if you go above that we're a big success and then the next time you increase that you increase that and you push it push it of push course it, push of it. course and if, if given normal circumstances this definitely would have hit well over a billion 
That's like, right. Like full stop blanket, like no doubt at all. Yeah. And that's definitely, if they, uh, there is no way they could have been expecting that given the current climate. But for them to take the numbers that they did get and look at that as a failure is probably the wrong way to look at this. Exactly. But mm. that's the whole thing. Warner Brothers and their executives are like, according to the interview and the comments made by Chris Nolan himself, who said he's personally happy with the result, considering yeah. the fact that, you know, five people went to see this, you know, as opposed to like the 50 million odd people who would see no, it. that's right. Warner Brothers, like high level, were still looking at it from the expectation of pre-COVID film box office expectations. Mm. So therefore, considering this, fair enough, it made 52 or $60 million on, or mm. over $100 million on top of its initial budget, yeah. is still technically considered a failure. Yeah, a failure or at, at the best, a break even. That's right. Mm. It's still a win in in the culture of film and going to the cinema. No, that's right. Which yeah. is what Chris Nolan is saying. Mm. But Warner Brothers are look at this, looking at this and going, well, where do we go from here? Is this a failure? Should we do this again? Should we pump so much money into something which people aren't going to the cinemas to see? Will they then stick to either holding those those properties mm. bay or will they just focus on streaming? Chris Nolan is stating that the 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 culture of going to the cinema mm. is alive and well, and it's just as popular as going to a restaurant. You know, going out, you could cook for yourself at home. No, that's but right. You exactly. want the experience of going to a restaurant and having it served to you. Yeah, exactly. The same as a movie. You could just put on Netflix at home mm. and watch a movie, but you want the big screen experience. Exactly. And that's why you and I love it so much as well. Yeah. But he's, yeah, more or less, he's thinking like minded in the sense that, okay, we need to adjust to this new reality because it isn't as accessible as it once was. That's right. But one day, it will be again. I've got my fingers crossed, of course. For but sure. one day it will be again because it is on par, I feel, and you feel as well, that going to the movies is on the same par as going out to eat. That's it, right. It, and, and a lot of the time they go hand in hand. Yeah, like, for let's sure. Let's be honest. Absolutely. You're going for a meal before you go to the movie, right? <laughs> no, yeah. Exactly. That's right. How many times have we been to Burger Edge before we had to Greater, <laughs> Greater, right. uh, Greater Union? Events <laughs> Cinemas at Glenda. to the uh, do, you, do you remember when we went? I, do you re- <laughs> I still <laughs> have that song on my phone. It's fantastic. Mm. Bring it back. But um, do you remember uh, when we went and saw uh, Peninsula? Yep. They printed out that it might not have been Peninsula, but either way, there was one random movie and it had the Greater Union logo on it. Yeah, on the, the receipts are still yeah. on there. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Like no, but no, but that was the first one, and, and I literally paused and went, "What's this?" And they're <laughs> like, "Oh, we used to be Greater," and I'm like, "Stop." I know that I grew up coming here. I yeah. know this was Greater Union. Why is it on my ticket? And he said, oh, sometimes in the system it does that. And I'm like, there's still hope in the system <laughs> that they're going to do it again. Like, yeah. I was like, oh my God, please rebrand back to Greater Union do you remember just for the song. The big shiny star that used to fight. Fa- like, oh, fuck used to yeah, like it was. Yeah. Flick- it's like a Christmas light. And but now all they out. have is a Vin. Because the T's always fucking broken. <laughs> yeah. Get the T fixed or get me the star back. <laughs> On the walkthrough candy bar thing that they used to have where you scoop oh, out yes, your own bag exactly. of But then people are like, eh, gems and stuff. You yeah, know? well, I mean, we used to steal it, but gems. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. I, I remember that. Uh, one scoop for me, one scoop for pocket. <laughs> oh, well, we just used to get the bag and see the line and just keep walking. And because yep. the, the tellers are all like 15, yeah. they're too afraid and to see And they're them. all preoccupied going, oh, is that two tickets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. And we're not mocking you. No. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a great job. Yeah, no, exactly. But uh, at the end of the day, I feel like Tenet had to happen. A big movie had to happen in this climate to get these results to find out what the go is. That's right. It it had to happen. A la movies going straight to on demand. A la movies going half and half. So Tenet had to happen being being exclusively cinema for its release. And then it'll eventually get home. But it had to happen. So we had a number to go off. Yeah. Yeah. And because of those predictions, of course, with success predictions, of Mm. course, that's obviously the same reason why 007 was pushed back. Exactly. That's the same reason why Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends has been pushed back. Those bigger hits, Mm. like they're aware that they're not going to get the same draw in the seats as they would if they were being released in a regular time frame. That's right. But in saying that. Blumhouse Productions, res- responsible for Halloween. They're still giving us movies anyway, so no. check us out on YouTube. We've got reviews coming We've got there. a double Blumhouse review coming, That's right. absolutely. But, yeah, no, exactly. So, yeah, it's just interesting to see in this current landscape. For sure. Yeah. Speaking oh, of no. horror... Oh, before no. We, no, 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 before we move on. <laughs> Not transitioning was, yet? No, I was just going to say, um, we were just talking about the virus. Yeah. Uh, the first completely... Uh, I don't know if it was 100%, but uh, Jurassic World... Dominion is finished. Dominion, that's right. Yes. It's. I, I believe it's one of the first to go back to work and that like with the virus going on and now it is completed. So they got through it all. I think it cost an extra $30 million with all the hygiene stuff they had to bring in, but 
that's the first big project that is now completed yep. in this current climate. So it's so, possible. So is Red Notice, but I'm pretty sure that's a Netflix production as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but still, no, I just thought that was like interesting that, okay, they, they've successfully gotten through it, yeah. with, like through the virus stuff, and they added $30 million to the budget and worked out. So, yeah, for, cool, for cool. sure. If, it's, if it's $30 million that- dollars is a gauge to film a movie and avoid- Keep it safe. Yeah, exactly. Contamination and stuff like that. That's That's cool. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Don't you know, ask like, me for it. I don't have it, but I'm sure, you know. Hollywood, we're... you're listening. Can we have it? <laughs> yeah, I'll have Kill 30, a million. 30 million dollar hygiene budget. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Yeah, speaking of. Oh, I was trying to transition with horror, but now it's like, speaking of. Kill oh, so, so yeah, there was, there was an accident on scene and a stuntman hurt his leg. It was a horrific moment. Oh, well, speaking of horrifying things. <laughs> what is <it> way? <laughs> Seth Rogen is back in the news yes. this week producing a meta horror mm. film called Video Nasty. Now, mm-hmm. I believe you put this in the notes this week. I did. And after absolutely. reading through the notes and doing mm. a bit of research on it, we all know that whether you love him or hate him, Seth Rogen has had some hits yes. over the years. Yes. And whether they've been like mm. serious films or whether they've been straight up comedies or mm. diverting here and there, Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and that Point Grey Productions have mm-hmm. also produced some crazy outlandish things like The mm-hmm. Boys, for example. Yes. Hyper violent, but also super realistic and also comedy driven. Um, set to produce Video Nasty, a meta horror comedy about a group of teens who rent a VHS tape and get sucked in mm. to a 1980s slasher movie. Now, oh man! Oh, I'm all about this. The cliches. And I was about to say. Give them to me. I was about to say. There's going to be so many cliches, and one of the things that I'm most looking forward to finding out is what the killer's name is, because it's going to oh. be something like left field. You know, like it's going to be something. I'd like- laugh if it was actually left field. Oh, <laughs> all right. The Hollywood, three point I'm first. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Yes, okay, for like, sure. as in a Seth Rogen produced horror film, it's obviously going to be a horror comedy as well because it yep. seems like his running buddy, um, Jonathan Levine, is attached to direct as well, who's uh, worked with him on Longshot, Fifty Fifty, and The Night Before as well. So yeah. they've been working together for a while. But like you said, Point Grey, and then also I believe it was I have scrolled past it now, but a Point Grey and um, oh my god, I apologize so much for this, but anyway. What Point Grey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited for this one. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. We've, like, we've already had like the apocalyptic horror comedy. Lionsgate. Lionsgate. Sorry. Lionsgate always Point produces Point is goods. teaming up with Lionsgate. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> so, yeah. So, whether this yes. is going to be straight up comedy or whether it's going to have that those more serious tones mm. with humor sprinkled in it, I think that might be the case for this. Just going yeah. from what we've seen so far, like yep. I think they would get away with a straight up horror mm. comedy. Mm-hmm. But I think if it, if it delves more into... The comedy aspect being delivered in a more natural aspect rather mm-hmm. than being a straight up haha slapstick scary movie yeah, style yeah. comedy. Mm-hmm. I think that would work in its favor, especially with the resurgence of like 80s things, you know, like the idea that this is like a throwback mm. essentially and they're getting sucked into what this. I'm wondering whether this, this is going to be set in modern day and they discover a tape and go, ooh, what's this? Yeah, exactly. And then get sucked into it ring style. And the first like. The first, like, 15 minutes, they end up just trying to mash it into slots they find around the house. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't go in the dishwasher. Oh, I couldn't. Yeah, exactly. What's chocolate? this inside? <laughs> oh, <laughs> ripping the tape out. Break yeah. my heart. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, no, ex- yeah, I'm curious about that. But I think that this uh, combination of production uh, behind it and, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm all about this, man. Just, like, horror comedy, even if it is, even if they do attempt, horror, horror. Straight up horror. I'm okay with that. Well, I've we've no seen- with that. We've seen Lionsgate, guys- man. That's right. Well, mm. not only that too, but we've seen people from the Seth Rogen uh, at Point Grey camp yes, yes. branch out into horror, and mm. we always come back to Halloween with Danny McBride. That's right. And Danny McBride was also involved too. It was more of an actor rather than a partial creator of mm. Alien Covenant. So yes, yes. they're definitely familiar with mm. stepping outside the realm of straight up comedy. That's and right. And I think Seth Rogen mm. and Point Grey, all those guys have mm-hmm. proven themselves to be able to step out of straight up comedies, stoner no comedies essentially, yeah. Yeah. and do something different and dabble into yeah. something that's more realistic or outside of- left field from comedy so Mm. whatever this turns out to be i'm assuming i'm going to enjoy it Mm -hmm. and i'm very much looking forward to video nasty absolutely but speaking of nasty yes oh this one hurt me this i'm leaving this one up to you Uh, and i hope it affected you as much as it did me uh well that's a big no but yes really but because uh, we've spoken about them before and we just always would appreciate the fact that he's like just this normal dude and she's like this banging chick and they just got along and they were the perfect Hollywood couple. I get that, but I just, I, 
I'm not sucked into the Hollywood couple thing as no, much no, as no, neither made. am I. Oh, but okay. I just love Jason Sudeikis yep. and I love Olivia Wilde. Okay, and it's over, ladies and gentlemen. It is over after <laughs> after. I need um, a wah, wah, wah <laughs> yes, button. exactly. After nine, ten years together, Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis have the perfect Hollywood couple of just average, just amazingness is yeah. over. Average amazingness. And full credit to them. Full credit to them. They broke up eleven months ago. Give it time. What? What? What do you mean? Give it time. <laughs> yeah, breakups always end up tragic. <laughs> no, 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 no. But they didn't tell anyone. Yeah, like they kept it to themselves privately. I, I did see like, another I, article. I, I, I did it, see another article saying, "Well, it may have happened sooner than we th- or, no more recent than we thought." Oh, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I no. But either way, one. according to their representatives, after they did announce it, yeah, it you know has been off for the last like 10 11 months and they've been amicable about it perfect down the middle like yeah. working together to co-parent because they've got i think three kids together Jesus. like yeah it, it, it it's it, it's heartbreaking to see this amazing couple end but yeah. at the same time it's refreshing to see that they have ended on such good terms they kept it private to themselves as well yeah. i assume to be able to work through it together without having cameras in their face going what do you think is she a bitch you know like <laughs> all of that shit so yeah. you know it, i just find it amazing that nobody clicked to this that they had been broken up or anything they they announced it, and the next day, it was Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis pictured separately as they work through breakup. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how have you not noticed that they haven't been together? Like, <laughs> yeah. like the next day, you could find them both and go picture, picture, and they're on uh, different parts of the city and That's stuff. That's right, yeah. But for the last 11 months, you've been like, aren't they cute? Like, That's because, like, Women's Weekly and all that, they love to just write- Women's Weekly? Utter bullshit. They're not big enough to be overseas. Yeah, but I've- No, what I'm yeah. saying, like, you, you go- Weekly. Uh, whoever. Mm. You go through the supermarket and you see, those, you see those magazine stands, mm. and there's like, oh, what's happening with Harry and such and such in- What's the fucking names? Mm. It, uh, not Parliament. What's- what is it fucking called? Harry and Parliament? No, no, not, not, not as a name. Markle. Meghan Markle and all that mm. mob. Yeah. The Queen- What are they called? The royal family? Royal family. See, I'm not engaged enough to fucking remember what that's called. But people buy- You can't in- remember that the queens are royal? The people buy into it so oh, much. Oh, and yeah. those, uh, those magazines mm. write such mm. utter garbage yeah. that, like, when I see, like, oh, Brad Pitt's doing a thing, and yeah. what does Jen Addison think about it? Like, at least- fucking, At least- Nobody knows because nobody actually spoke to them. No. Shut the fuck no, up. No, A reliable source or a source close to the couple. Like, yeah, and that's then all- just above that will be a picture- this man ate his wife. Here's what she <laughs> thinks about it. It's like, what the fuck? How do you know about this and nobody uh, else? <laughs> like, fuck off. Ah, uh, Jen and Brad back together. This midget fought off, fought off a lion and then ate its leg. That's like, right. Yeah. yeah. While eating his he own t- leg. He <laughs> tells the brave story as he fished it out from its anus. Like, That's, yeah. Like, and, but old ladies, like, they fucking- Oh, they, yeah. Oh, nom, 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 Ooh, did you hear about Brad and Jen again? Yum, I yum, know. Yum, yum, yum. Oh. That midget lion eater. Like, yeah. That's right. So, uh, I don't- crazy. Buy into the Hollywood scoops about their no. relationships, mm. and like hearing about and them, it's like yes, I respect them both as actors and as mm. human beings. But whether they were together or if they're broken up or if they never met each other, mm. I don't give a fuck. Just mm. give me the movies. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's fair. I just like the fact that he just looks like a dude, and he's a Regular funny man, dude, and he yeah. nailed this incredible actress who's he also did a several babe. times. Like, yeah, exactly. At least yeah. three. <laughs> she would have found plenty of ectoplasm floating around there. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. I hope he is glows in the dark, but. <laughs> No, either way, um, yeah, no, I just, uh, I, I'm sad to see it over because I enjoyed, like, for example, they went to award shows and she's just doled out so beautifully and stuff and he's in a tuxedo with white joggers. Like, yeah. he's just a dude, you know, and he just somehow Relatable. nailed this 10 out of 10. Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. I feel like him, you know? <laughs> but no, anyway, like, full credit to them for being able to keep it under wraps. And the fact that this wasn't in a rumor magazine or anything like that really shows that they're full of shit because surely somebody yeah. knew and could have just, like- No, whisk, somebody, whisk, whisk, somebody would have brought Chinese the news whisk, whisk. at least a year before it actually happened just because- Mm. story oh yeah no exactly i'm sure they've broken up four times in women's weekly over yes. the last five years that's right while but fighting lions of anyway course. so yeah. that moving on from that uh, uh moving yeah. on to a tiny little bit of news about people mm. being upset about things you know it's it Wait, happens so much in 2020 bullshit oh, it's, fine, all right. it's hard to believe it's not hard to believe not a chance anyway uh apparently there's a ryan reynolds movie in the works it's a stoner movie, so it's it's good to see another stoner comedy on the, in the works. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, the original director of Home Alone is not happy about all, like, the related movies themed similarly to Home Alone, as well as potential sequels and stuff. Mm. Anyway, Ryan Reynolds is coming up with a stoner comedy called Stoned Alone. Uh, 
as from what I can p picture this to be, he's stoned and alone and people are trying to break in and he has to fight back somehow, but he's super baked. I don't really know. Anyway, that's that's the idea I'm getting from the title. It's not a bad concept oh, for no, an a, adult film. Yeah, it's a great concept. But the problem here is, mm -hmm. is Chris it, Columbus. Chris Columbus has to say this. Mm -hmm. They're re the reboots are just silly to me. When I read about something called Stoned Alone, they were going to do it with Ryan. It was an R-rated Home Alone movie about stoners. I thought to myself, this is just an insult to the art of cinema. Oh, fuck off. It's one of those comments no, again. No, okay. Chris Columbus has done some good things, okay? And, no, absolutely. And, and him getting the, like, uh, if, uh, have you seen the movies that made us on Netflix? Oh, I've seen a few of them. Yeah. yeah. He, he was like- not supposed to be able to, like, make that movie, you know? Like, but yeah. it did, and oh, it yeah, became sure. a huge hit, you know? You Dude, should be shut the fuck up. I, like, like we talked about I earlier- I enjoy your I work, but how about you just let people do what they want? We complain about sequels and stuff like that all the time, but what's that one thing we say, Dylan? Please say it for that's me. That's what I said. Oh, I was about to say. Yeah. It doesn't take away from the original. And that's the thing. It's not even a direct sequel. No. Be pissy at Disney Plus because they're actually fucking remaking Home Alone. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's fair enough to Get be upset- pissy at them. It's fair not enough, Ryan Reynolds. It's fair enough to be upset about a company- entirely rebooting something that you put your heart and soul yeah. into many years ago, yeah. which has then influenced mm. so many other films and, mo and movies and TV shows throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Stoned Alone isn't trying to take away from the magic no, that and was it's Home not, Alone. It's not going to try and outside of the name. And I assume if your concept is correct, they're not trying to like capitalize on it too much. They're just parody, par parody, parody, Parodying. Thank Wait. you. Yeah. You know, right? I, like I know. I've said it in my head and I'm like parodying, parody, parodying, parodying. Parody, Par parodying, parodying. No, that no, doesn't that's sound not right either. Parodying, parodying, parodying. It is now parodying. <laughs> but yeah, no. And, and honestly, like imitation is the most sincere, sincere form of flattery. That's Your right. film still has a cultural impact to the point where when it gets remade, people say "fuck you" for doing that. Then all of a sudden, somebody wants to go, "Hey, what if we made this into a, an adult film?" You should be going, damn, that's cool. That's right. You, you know, should, like, yeah. the, the idea that, like, he's turned around and go, like, I, as I was saying, I get the idea that Disney's making a cash grab sequel. Yes. I would be pissed about that if someone says, 3 c 2 pod, here it comes. Like, <laughs> fuck you. But if somebody, like, you know, in this- think age, we're worth being cash grabbed? I know, Come right? On. We didn't make a cash ourselves. I know, we didn't even grab any cash. Yeah. Anyway, it's Patreon, all- Patreon, 2C3 pod. <laughs> that's right. But the idea that, like, there's a stoner comedy with one of the world's biggest stars yeah. making a, ob an obvious influence and homage to one of your creations, which is- <laughs> I, th I would find this- Flattering. Uh, flattering yeah. and complimentary, exactly. essentially. So, so to say it's, it's an insult to the art of cinema, like hmm. Home Alone, it's a great film hmm. and I get its its charm and I do watch it every Christmas as well. Of course. Like, I understand, but like, it, that's not Taxi Driver. It's Home Alone. <laughs> exactly, like, that's right. Should, <sighs> people may have even considered that to be an insult to cinema because of the type of jokes hmm. and humor that was spattered throughout and- Hey, Chris, don't forget, a studio rejected it and you had to go begging to another studio just to get another 500 grand. Okay? That's right. Just saying, like, people didn't want this movie. That's right. So, I mean, I'm glad it's mm. out now because people do like it and people want it now. Oh, no, no, no. It turned out to be a classic. But in um, terms yeah. of saying something else that's inspired by your creation to be an insult to cinema, shut the fuck up. Exactly. Exactly. But you're completely right. It's not Taxi Driver. It's not The Godfather. Just chill out. Okay? Just chill out. Just chill out. Yeah. Just chill out. But speaking, speaking of, of chilling, chilling out. out Ooh, Jinx. yeah. Warm move, cork. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. All right. Um, you, um, we've, that been laugh was cute. we've been podcasting for a while now. Um, mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the Suicide Squad, mm. we've seen uh, the release, like teaser trailers and the casting choices that, that have been announced by James Gunn. Already stacked to the fucking gills. Absolutely. Stacked to the gills. And it looks like it's going to be amazing and violent and mm -hmm. heartbreaking and funny and all of the above. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've also recently had a surprise uh, announcement over Instagram that Sylvester fucking Stallone is in this. Where? I don't know Where who does he's he playing. Fit in? I am assuming it'll be a relatively small part I... because he did make a cameo. Mm. <laughs> he had an actual character name of an actual Marvel character. Yeah. But he didn't have any kind of- it was just like a costume. There was no makeup or anything. Oh, it was just okay. alone. Yeah. In Guardians 2. That's- oh, yeah, he did too. Yeah, I completely blanked on that. Yeah. Yeah, well, shit. Okay. But I- I really hope this wasn't supposed to be a surprise. I really hope this wasn't leaked, like, as a- like, you know- I think it was- on I hope it didn't spoil, because if it, he was supposed to be a significant player in it, even for a, a brief 10-minute scene or something- Yeah. He would have been on the list. 
You yeah, know, he would have sure. been advertised. Yeah. So the fact that it's coming out at this stage, I really hope it wasn't. It, this isn't a spoiler. Yeah, and it ruins the surprise. Well, I I remember reacting to seeing Sylvester Stallone in Guardians Two. I didn't realize he was going to be in it. And no. then, he, then he popped up. I was like, "Fuck yeah, Stallone's yeah. in the MCU now." Yeah, that's what I mean. So I'm you hoping know? we weren't supposed to have that reaction, and now we've been told, and we're like, "Oh." Now we know that that's going to happen. Well, sorry to spoil it to everybody who listens to this podcast, but mm. it was on. I'm pretty oh, sure. No, 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 I'm not saying how dare you put this in the notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, well, it was posted on mm. Sliced Alone's Instagram. Yeah. So it was his announcement to make. And exactly. apparently he's friends with James Gunn and blah, 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 yeah. blah. Yeah. In saying that, too, we talked uh, earlier. We go back, we go down. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I know exactly what you just said. See? For sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But in saying that, going back to the idea that Jurassic Park Dominion has finished release, uh, finished production, sorry, mm-hmm. amongst COVID, as well as Red Note with yes. Ryan Reynolds, Gal Gadot, and The Rock, Dwayne The Rock and Johnson. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Sylvester Stallone's own film, The Samaritan, has yes. also wrapped up filming Which as well is recently. It's also a superhero film, if I'm not mistaken. It, it, from what I know about it, mm. he's a nice guy who has con- some kind of superpowers, but he also teams up with some kid to do something nice or whatever. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a very heartwarming film, but it's set within a, it's almost like a film I haven't seen. What is it called? Un, no, yeah, Unbreakable. Yes. But Bruce Willis's character, but like Sylvester Stallone, but he's good mm. and he's not like a villain. It's, yeah. That's the vibe I'm getting from it. Yeah. Yeah. But Sylvester mm. Stallone is in Suicide Squad and that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Adding to a, a, the already stacked list. Wouldn't it be cool if he played the big main villain? That'd be dope. That would That'd be, dope. be dope. As long as they have subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But all right. Ending off the film and TV news this week with a bit of bittersweet news, which is the fact that uh, our beloved- Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis, who we still want back, of course. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, uh, about a month ago, he was uh, sucker punched out the front of his uh, apartment building, which is, like, devastating because the dude is old and- Dude is old, and Rick Mm. Moranis hasn't done literally anything, as far as I'm aware- Except be a good dad. To anger anybody. Exactly. And- Ever. And he's been- Punched in the back of the head out of yeah. nowhere. And did you see the CCTV footage I of it? I didn't really want to watch it, to be honest. No, I, 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 you can't tell that it's Rick Moranis at okay. all. Like, as in, it's, it's like off to the right and just randomly a dude in a baseball cap and a jacket just walking like that. And then out of nowhere, this dude coming the other way just literally turns and just goes, poof. That's fine. No, no, no. But Rick Moranis, he falls down and he's like, oh, shit. What is but this? Australia? Gets up. <laughs> Sucker punch. King hits, right? Mm. <clears throat> but no, luckily, Rick was okay. And now the sweet part of the news is yep. they have arrested the suspect. So that motherfucker is going to get his justice. That's right. NYPD mm. took police to a th- poli- to NYPD police. Yeah. New York Police Department Police. <laughs> yeah. That's mm. what's throwing me off yes. about that. The took- NYPD. Yes. Took a 35 year old male into custody in connection over the coast over the weekend. And pretty serious due to Moranis's age. That's what he's being in trouble for. Obviously, you mm. could punch like if it was you and me and we had a disagreement at a pub, we wouldn't go to jail for it. You know, unless yeah. one of us wanted well, to press charges. Yeah, exactly. In this case, he could have fucking he, killed he this guy. He attacked an elder, elderly man. That's right. Simple as that. That's yeah. right. And Rick fucking Moranis, come exactly. on. What's going on here? Surely that 2020 dude. couldn't okay. get any worse. Exactly. And then Rick Moranis comes out of nowhere. And Damn, gets hammered. On. And gets hammered for what? Walking. <laughs> what? Well done for still walking. I mean, that's like we talked about, we yeah. reported, a, maybe it was around the same time last year where mm. Arnold Schwarzenegger got drop kicked oh, in the back. that's right, yeah. And he kind of just bounced off him mm. and Schwarzenegger being Schwarzenegger, fair enough, he's old, mm. but he's still built like a brick shit house. Yeah, like, of course. The muscle underneath that has remained has just solidified mm. into pure concrete. <laughs> yeah. So the, the dude just kind of <laughs> bounced off. Yeah. But in this case, Rick Moranis, we've he's- seen him recently make a cameo in that Ryan Reynolds Mint mobile ad where he just kind of showed up for a minute and left. Yeah. You know, like, mm. he, he looks relatively like, he's not like a completely frail old man but no, he's getting no, no. on he's oh, like no. in his late 60s no exactly that's right and that's the thing he was never intimidating to begin with no. you know exactly but surely that dude like that dude 35 years old right yeah he would have seen Ghostbusters as a child surely like and I, he might have been on drugs or something like that but even if you were on drugs and you were walking wouldn't you go holy shit that's Rick Moranis yeah instead of going I'm gonna punch him like yeah Oh. In saying that too, if any, I saw that, any, I would have freaked out. Any I reason, would have punched myself. <laughs> any reasonable person hmm. in that situation, whether it is Rick Moranis or anyone else, yeah. oh yeah, you wouldn't punch them. No, but in this case, this crazy motherfucker decided to punch somebody, hmm. which happened to be a fucking Rick Moranis, a Rick, Mor- a, the Rick Moranis. The, yes, go the fuck to jail. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, hundred percent. But but at the same time, this person obviously has some kind of fucking mental issue because. I think it was just 
It was just wrong place, wrong time. It was probably, that dude was yeah. going to punch somebody in that moment. I think so too. Yeah. I don't know too much about it, obviously, apart from what we've or been given. He really hates Ghostbusters. Or he really <laughs> hates Ghostbusters. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Duplasm everywhere. <laughs> you came on me, motherfucker. <laughs> there we go. Full maybe, circle to the pre-podcast maybe had, chatter. Maybe he had a wet dream mm. that night, and he was like. I'm yeah, going to get him I where he can leave his apartment if I see a Ghostbuster. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but anyway, he's been arrested and will serve his due time. And we hope that Rick Moranis is fine and comes back. That's right, for sure. <sighs> yes. Anyway, we've got mm. one tiny little bit of movie stuff that I'll just briefly mention. Oh, okay. And then we'll yep. skip right past it. Yep. Just in the same vein as the... the article before this which i've already forgotten about oh mm. that's right the home alone chris columbus complaining about something mm. uh david fincher oh, right. yeah david mm. fincher has come out and obviously you know notorious director of fight club yes. a, a story seven and seven. zodiac yes a bunch mm. of different movies mm. but most prominently fight club in this particular situation a film that portrays a man with serious mental health issues mm. uh he's come out and slammed joker joaquin phoenix's joker that it wasn't yeah. a good portrayal of somebody with a mental illness okay and I feel the need Why? to say something in the sense that mm. it's a m movie yeah, it, about a made-up character. Mm -hmm. And do you really think that anybody who has a criminal record or, you know, has done crime or killed somebody or robbed somebody, mm. do you think everybody, every single one of those people didn't have a particular issue that drew them to doing that? Exactly. And so, no, I completely the agree. The Joker with you. wouldn't have played out the same way hmm. if Arthur Fleck was, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, life sucks, but hmm. like, I'm not mentally f fucked up, so everything's fine. Yeah, you know, exactly. In that's this case, right. yes, mm. of course he had a mental illness, mm. therefore leading him to the events of the Joker. No, that's right. And David Fincher has turned around, David Fincher, <sighs> sorry, has turned around and been like, oh, mental illness, it's not a good portrayal. Listen, bitch, it's a character. Exactly. That's it's right. a fucking character. And if he's going to take that route with this film, he needs to then go back and look at every fucking film that's ever portrayed mental illness. Yeah. Because I guarantee there's worse portrayals than this. For sure. But also, like you just said, it's a fucking character. Is it Rain on Me, Sean Penn, Simon? No, Ra name? Rain on Me is um, uh, Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. <clears throat> and <clears throat> obviously that- I am Sam is Sean Penn. I am Sam. Yeah. Same kind of concept? Uh, same concept, except- uh, <laughs> One's much worse. Uh, well, uh, to quote Tropic Thunder, not myself. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't, don't go, go full, full retard. retard. And uh, Sean Penn, no Oscar. Dustin Hoffman, Oscar. Yeah. yeah, you know, so. that's right. But, but anyway, in terms mental of like illness. mental illness, yes. like, mm. fuck, like, I, honestly, oh. I, I'm glad he didn't at least touch the darling film that is Simple Jack. And I'm <laughs> glad he left that alone <laughs> uh, sure, because yes. that was the perfect portrayal of all mental illnesses. That's <laughs> yes. Or all in one. Obviously yes. a joke, ladies and gentlemen, don't quote me, but um, no, dude, it's a fucking character. There it's a is, character. No, but that's the thing. How can you say this one doesn't isn't a good portrayal of mental illness when there are so many different types of mental illness? That's right. Like, who's to say that this isn't the perfect portrayal of a particular type of mental illness that people have suffered from? You know, like, I'm sure that this kind of thing has happened before. Like, people to, were to, worried to, about- to, to blanket statement yeah. it as a poor portrayal is completely off base. That's completely right. Completely off base. The weird thing about that is because more- ugh. A lot of people felt relatable to Arthur Fleck, to the Joker in this in this film. Mm. Like, obviously, people aren't going to go out and like shoot people on a subway, but they yeah. they under the way the film was portrayed, they no, no, understood no. No, how he, he was a felt. victim of society. Yeah, that's mm. right. But then David Finch is turning around and being like, "Oh, mental illness." Like, dude, like Fight Club. I'm yes, fair enough. It's a great film, but I'm sure there's people out there who have thought or felt the same yeah. way that you do about Joker about uh -huh. your own film. Yeah, no, because they've got a different perspective and opinion mm. on what mental health should mm. be portrayed in a film. No, that's right. Just F shut the fuck up. It's a movie. No, exactly. And that's the thing. And that's why it sucks that, like, I don't like hearing you bash him, but he deserves it in this case. Because why? Yeah. Why even say something? Like- I'm, I'm not bashing the dude in saying, like, no, you know, no, no, he no, should no. never make a movie again or never have mental illness portrayed mm. in his movies again. No. Like, I'm just saying, like, it's just, just shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. you, you've yeah. done this. Literally, this comment has yeah. done nothing to further the uh, awareness of mental illness. No. It's like, like, yeah. There's literally no purpose of you saying this. Keep it, that opinion to yourself, David. That's right. You are a, an incredible director. That's right. Stick to what you do good. Yeah. And leave Joaquin alone. <laughs> yeah. Leave and Brittany it, alone. And maybe if, if there's one lesson to take away from this, mm. is saying that, like, you know, if Joker has a portrayal of mental mm. illness in that regard and people were scared of this film 
of mm. showing what people can do in that yeah, situation. And yeah. if they feel that mm. way, maybe look at this from the perspective of, okay, if people- Because the whole story is about somebody who's downtrodden on by society who already has a particular mental illness to begin yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Yeah. and is not helped mm. by society mm. in any way. Yeah. It just goes to show that if people feel relatable to the Joker, mm. there's more people out there who need help rather than going, that's a shitty movie. No, exactly. Like, and I feel like he might have said this with the hopes that somebody goes, oh, you're right. I don't feel relatable to it. Whoops, a daisy. Yeah. But no, how about uh, you just pay attention to the fact, like you just exactly said, maybe this could help bring light to society's uh Disrespect issues. and complete Disregard overlook of and, yeah. people with mental illness. That's so, what I, that's what I'm trying to say. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. No, you bring up the perfect point. So, yeah. David, just stick to what you're doing. Just don't even go there. Yeah. Just and, leave it. And people and, who feel like mm. the Joker in the way that they have been downtrodden on society mm. and they don't feel like they're worth it or they've got mm. anybody to talk to, 2C3Pod, we're live on Facebook and Twitch. Come check us out. You can <laughs> interact with our chat. We're all fucking good Send people. Send us an inbox on any social media platform. We'll respond. That's right. <laughs> we'll yeah. read it and respond. We're here for you. That's right. Yeah, there, exactly. is a there is a place to go and there are people mm. to speak to. So yes. don't lash out I and mean, kill Wall Street we're Journals. probably not the best option, but we're an option. Well, I'm not qualified. Yeah. All I'm saying is, is that if mm. you feel this way, mm. don't listen to David Fidger, uh, watch Joker and then go get some help. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. All anyway, right. we're moving on to very small, very passoverable gaming news this week because Ooh, it's 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 hard to look at like gaming news from a, a, an entire yeah. perspective because there is so of much course, of course. gaming news that is very niche mm -hmm. that I could say one thing and it means nothing to everybody. Yes. So very quickly, I'm going to talk about the things that I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> there is a remake that's been re that's been released uh, recently of a video game from 2003, mm -hmm. which was a sleeper hit. It was a cult classic. Yeah. Like it didn't perform very well. A lot of people didn't really know about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But those who were fans of it remember it very fondly. It's a game called Thirteen. It's based mm -hmm. off a comic book. Yeah. And the thing that was so unique and great about it is that the entire video game looked like a comic book. Okay. Cell shaded. Yeah, that that's style. Cool. That's cool. That's was cool. magnificent. Yeah. And it's super playable today. Mm -hmm. It's like five dollars on Steam. Yep. You can it plays really well and you can do that. Anyway, a company has been remaking it for the last number of years and they mm. finally released it after one year of delays. Yep. Um, it's finally out. I was looking forward to it, and it turns out so a lot of other people as well. Yep. For a hefty price tag of fifty fucking dollars. Okay. Still haven't bought it yet. Yep. But uh it's disastrous. Okay. It shit the bed. Big time. Uh, that's so, not what you want. No. So mm. not only apparently there are technical issues in terms of- I almost of shit the bed last week. Wow. Yeah. While yeah. we were supposed to be recording. Well, I'm Throw glad you then. didn't no, exactly. do it there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to shitting the bed. Um, yeah. yeah the, so the, the remake of 13, mm. for those who are familiar with this mm. first person shooter from Yonder Year, it's been yeah. re-released. The remake is re-released and it's come out and it's buggy as fuck, but that's not the problem uh. that people- Yes, there are bugs in modern video game releases. We get that. It's become the norm now. They shouldn't be, but there are. Yeah. And for those who don't know what I mean by that, it's say, for example, if you're holding a gun and it turns into a chair, you know, yeah. or something doesn't quite connect and it distorts and whatever else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing that made the original so great and unique was wasn't it's the way it felt when you were shooting a gun or the characters or the story. Yeah. It was the visual representation. Mm. Apparently the remake, all the characters and the cell shadedness of it is almost completely absent. And they basically look like Fortnite characters now. Oh, They've got okay. that cartoony aspect to it. Yeah. It's not cell shaded like Borderlands for, yeah. for something like, like a comic mm. book. It doesn't have that, that 2D element to yeah. it. It's fully 3D realized now. And it just, it's, they're, they're saying that's got no soul. Yeah. Like they didn't put their heart and soul it's into like this. like copy and paste. Well, not only that. Or a like, reprint. They could have copy and pasted it, but mm. they tried to change it and it mm. just, it didn't work. It doesn't yeah. go for the same charms that it had originally. So- That's disappointing. If you, if you scroll down to the article, you'll mm. see there's an opening scene where a lifeguard picks you up. Mm. The first screenshot is the original cell shade of the really thick black outline comic book look. Mm. The second screenshot is the modernized reinterpretation of the same character. And she just looks like a Fortnite skin. Uh, They're like, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. That's the, that's the modern- game aesthetic but oh. it's not the 13 it's not the game's aesthetic yeah exactly that 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 doesn't work for what made the game work originally that's right mm. and people who are going to play this new one aren't mm. new people to the mm. genre yeah it's, it's catered to those who like the original it's yeah. not a, it's not a big property it's not going to no. draw people like you into playing it no. it's people like me who played the original who yeah. want it and now i'm not buying if it. you didn't bring this up i wouldn't have known about it and wouldn't no, have cared 1999 or 97 percent very negative reviews on steam it, Damn. It, and this is what i was saying pre-show uh they've turned around and said oh sorry COVID." Uh, 
how can you use that as an excuse for fucking ruining the game you can't. and taking away the one like thing that actually made it a name? Well, the thing is, with COVID, it's actually brought a lot of good things. Like, movies are a bit more polished, no, it, and a lot other you, video game releases have been better off for it. I was going to say, you can't blame it on that, considering all the work gets done at a fucking home or a studio. Like, it's not like they had to go out onto scene, and yeah. onto sets, and film this. Like, it's that's a game. Right. It's done on computers. You can do it at home. That's you right. You cannot blame COVID. Full no, stop. That's right. But not only that, too, but uh, there was- a, terrible. They pushed back a year. Mm-hmm. When did COVID start? <laughs> exactly. This thing mm. was disastrous from the get go. Yeah. And it's, hopefully they, you know, they, uh, to say that they're going to fix this, they would have to do a massive overhaul start from scratch. So I don't think this is fixable in the exactly. state that it's in. No. Um, but moving on to a little bit more positive news about video games being released in the con- Sure. The modern climate. Yeah, I was waiting. <laughs> yeah. Remember a little while ago, I talked about how I got a, a beta access code to play a, a video game called Proteus, a throwback in Indeed, you did. Yes. Yeah, the, the whole game has been released on early access now. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. And everybody in the retro FBS fan base is mm. just blowing up about it. It's a game called Proteus. You may have seen me stream it. Mm -hmm. It's got that retro visual aesthetic to it that's mixed in with modern game engine graphics. Yes, yes, And it's yes. bloody and it's violent. And anybody who likes the old school first person FPSs that are just bombastic and violent it's everything you love about a game it's everything i love about mm. a game it's it's the old and new mixed together and it's perfect i love that yeah I love that. so that's, that's good now yeah yeah no, is that available for everyone now uh so it's on steam i'm not sure if this i'm not sure if it's big enough mm. that it's going to get a, a console release it no, may yeah yeah but it, i mean anybody can grab it now on steam yes yeah, so sure. yeah, cool, 30 dollars cool, cool. australian yeah, okay, australian dollars yeah. yeah nice um what else bit, you got there uh epic games has launched legal action in uh, Epi, uh, Apple uh, Apple Australia. Oh, why us? Specifically Australia because it's going to get- Because, Rude. from what I know about this, yeah. apparently Australia is pretty hot with its mobile video game production scene. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was not aware. And the lawsuit that's going on with Apple- Killabara coming to the app store. <laughs> with, <laughs> with Apple users and video and Apple mobile game creators utilizing mm. the technology from Epic and the Unreal Engine, yeah. apparently that's going to hinder them pretty well. And Epic says it goes against the ACCC, which is the Australian consumer and oh, something Oh, so they're more. looking into international fucking loopholes and shit to try and target shit. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, they're trying to target- oh, damn it. They're saying that it's going to be a detriment- to Australian <sighs> mobile game makers. Oh, shut up. In saying that, looking at the reasons, it mm. probably will because the, the Google and Apple store mm. take 30% of the price, considering yes. that if they sold it on their own, like that makes more than the developers themselves, essentially, in the, mm. in the end. Yeah. So what, what Epic are trying to say is, if they set up their own ways to make money and to buy these games themselves, like mm. they would through like PC or console or whatever, Rather than Apple or Google taking 30%, they yeah. get at least 90 to 95%, potentially 100, therefore giving a bigger return to the developers to actually earn a yeah, living. Yeah, yeah. Rather than working out mm. of a shed for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So that's the, that's the argument here. I get that, but also they're just fishing for dollars. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, they're suing us. Dollary dues. That's for sure. Yeah. That's right. No. Uh, but, but that's anyway. about it. Yeah. yeah. Call now. of Duty Cold War's out. Oh, okay. It's cool. good. Yeah. yeah it's no. really good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But yeah. it's time. Yeah. Four? Yeah. Is it trailer park? No. No. Wait. What have we watched yes. at home? What have we watched at home, ladies and gentlemen? All right, All so away right. from the news. Mm. We've skipped past that now. We're going to talk mm. about what we've reviewed at home. Do you want to kick us off with the first one? I will kick us off, and then uh, we'll go back and forth with the ones that we both haven't seen. Okay. Yep. Like, you know, like as in, I'll, I'll go with what I've watched that you haven't, and yep. vice versa. And then we'll talk about the ones that we both have watched. For sure. Just, yeah, serendipitous. Um, uh, the first one that I wanted to touch on is I busted through the first two seasons of Netflix original series. Yep. You. Oh, uh, yes. I think uh, well, my wife has watched it and a lot mm. of people have. Yeah. Not really my cup of tea, but I've heard some fantastic things about it. And I didn't think it would be my cup of tea either. Now, this is the series led by Penn Badgley, uh, most famous for Gossip Girl. So, of yes, course, that's that, immediate, that, my immediately cup draws, tea, yeah. like, that immediately draws like, you know, that's why I hadn't even thought about it. You know, I see that and I'm like, oh, OK, it's not for me. Fair enough. Yeah. You know, but I got, I got poked and prodded to watch it. And I got to say, man. It's fucking great. Penn Badgley- I, I believe it. Yeah. Penn Badgley has goddamn chops. Yeah. Like, full stop. I'm just going to say that straight out of the gate. 100%. But the show is simply- uh, This is a man who is obsessed with the idea of love and will do anything to make sure that he gets the love that he wants. Yeah. 
and gets to give the love that he has. Mm. And it's incredible, man. It's very psychological and it's a thriller. It's not like a, and there is obviously drama in it, but it's yeah. definitely more thriller than drama. And it's very tense, man. And the first he, two he, seasons are fantastic. He kills people at the bottom of his library that he works at. No, no, no. He um, uh, is a manager of a bookstore. Manager of a bookstore. A bookstore. Yeah. But no, no, no. That's not the premise at all. Some like- kind of delicious biscuit. <laughs> But just throwing that in there. Anyway, um, no, it's fantastic. They just started shooting season three. Yep. So I could not be more keen for that. But you, it is a great psychological oh, thrilling. Thank you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> it's a great psychological thrilling series, and it genuinely gets you hooked on each episode. And I busted through. This is the first time in a while I've binged multiple wow. seasons of one show, and it took me about three days. Jesus. And yeah, I'm not complaining at all. You is fantastic. Oh, thank you. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> How about my grandma? Twice. How about my grandma? You is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. you go so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's something that you've watched that I haven't this week? Okay. I've been talking mm. about this for the past past, past few fast, weeks, fast. but I finally got there mm. and it's unfortunate. I'm pretty sure this is 10 episodes long, but I've only got access to seven. Yes. Anyway, the opening episode is by far my favorite and the most outstanding episode out of the entire series so far. Mm. Um, What's American the show science called? fiction drama. I'll get to that. Okay, all right. I was like, can you tell me what it is first? Raised by wolves. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Damn, it doesn't work. I was waiting for it. Uh, it's, yes. a, it's an American science fiction television okay. Okay. series. Mm. Um, premiered on HBO Max, produced by uh, executive, produced by Ridley Scott. So ah, producer lovely. of the Alien films, of course, or some of course. Of the man who should let the aliens go. That's correct. Hmm. But in saying that, Raised by Wolves definitely feels a lot like Alien Covenant and okay. Prometheus, but if it was good. Okay. Um, essentially, the story, hmm. te- the story tells. The, the TV show tells the story of these... It's There's like a future war set in like, I think it's 2145. So yeah. it's 100 years in the future. So a couple there's, of a, there's a warring faction between atheists and this very heavy religious group of people mm. and the religious people have essentially won crazies and non-crazies is that crazies what and non-crazies mm-hmm. isn't it? yeah mm. anyway these two ro- reprogrammed androids have been sent to this faraway planet which is completely deserted mm. uh, with human embryos and they raise these embryos to start a new colony which is completely uh completely free like, from that free from corruption yeah. and religion yeah. and all of those yeah. things to live yeah. by the atheist ideology essentially that's set within this universe right um obviously conflict ensues the mm. further we go along we're introduced to more characters but the reason i like the first episode so much yes. is because it was purely centered around the idea of these two straight up androids mm. that have s- produced these human beings yep. and they have to work out how the fuck to raise these things on a deserted planet oh so it's a comedy <laughs> it definitely is not a comedy. It's like a sitcom. Well, that's the thing. Like, it's got such an amazing science fiction. Two androids, one afraid of pigeons. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's a callback to Patreon 2C3 Pod. What will they do next? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, as I said, the story goes on and it continues on and it introduces new characters that are introduced. And the, the, the story arcs about the additional characters is very fascinating. Mm, mm. But to me, like, I, I get why they went where they're going, essentially. And yeah, I'm very much yeah. looking forward to catching up the end of this series. Okay. I, I'm hooked on it. I, you yeah. know, I don't watch a lot of TV shows. But no, that's right. Exactly. This one it's really, hard for you to get into them. That's yeah. right. But this one I really mm. sunk my teeth into. But yeah. I will state that the first episode, because it was very centered around the idea of these androids setting up this colony. Yeah. I was kind of hoping it would just stick to that. Yeah. And tell the story over the course of however many seasons of these kids mm. growing up in this very deserted fucking existence. Okay. But it then, you know, it, it, it escalates to a completely different thing, but it's get, it's definitely got a very Ridley Scott feel to it. Yeah. Do you remember Alien 1, the android Ash, how yes. when he's ripped apart, he's got blue milk splaying yeah, everywhere, yeah. white sort of goop everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Androids, same deal. Ah, like, they're all, right. like, goopy and stuff. Ectoplasm. And, ectoplasm, yeah, ah. that's right. So, Raised by Wolves, <laughs> nah, cool. awesome. produced by HBO Max, same yeah. team, I believe, mm. or very similar team. Mm. Anything produced by HBO, you know it's got a high quality yeah. to it, like a high budget, yeah. high quality to it, yeah. high, high attention to detail. So, yeah. Raised by Wolves, if you're into crazy science fiction, yeah. definitely one to check out. Very good, very yeah. good. Uh, anything else you wanted to touch on before we uh, uh, compare notes about yes, I similar properties? This is one that you reviewed the last episode, uh, Truth Seekers. Oh, yeah, of course. I yeah. watched the first few episodes of that yep, too. Man. I haven't watched the rest of it, but I plan to. Yeah. It's enjoyable. It's, it's fun. fun. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Fun. I think I'm about four episodes deep and I'll be like, yeah, I'll finish that. It's not yeah. as heavy in the with the comedy v- as well as the no. scares as I expected. It's yeah. very 
very yeah. kind of even and it's balanced balanced mm. across the board yeah um but yeah good fun but so far it's just kind of plodding along you know just getting there but i feel like it's gonna in saying that though mm. episode one yeah the dog yeah holy shit i know yeah Oof. didn't expect that did we no spoilers mm. but fuck that poor fucking dog yeah i know jesus I know, it's been under that blanket for 30 years that's right yeah Oof. um anything else you wanted to touch on there that you've seen that i haven't um, yet um oh yes one more thing so oh, okay cool yeah. so on amazon after i watched one of these i assume it was truth seekers no it was the patreon special anyway i finished it then i yeah sorry <laughs> sidetracked there no worries jay and silent bob reboot yes it's now on amazon yes i saw it sitting there it's and fun yep good it's fun good kevin it's, smith it's what do you expect it's incredibly dumb yeah but it also incredibly heartwarming and, and heartfelt of as course the, well the story that it tells essentially anybody who knows anything about jay and silent mm. bob especially the reboot we already know from the mm. trailers of course yeah that jay yep. is the father of kevin hart oh, sorry harley quinn smith in the film yes her character but mm. she doesn't know it and he doesn't know it and they yep. find out yeah and they go on this fantastical journey and fair enough jay definitely still has that stoner persona of oh. course oh <laughs> he's a stoner poet and he knew it stoner persona um and he portrays that throughout the entire film and yeah, he's still the typical character that he is mm -hmm. but he definitely brings in this element of growth okay right right and right, so right. does silent bob they yeah. both have this growth element but more jay because he carries the film when kevin smith was talking about the production of jay and silent bob he was mm. i remember him saying in his own podcast that he was a bit worried about whether jay would want to come back to this considering he's not being a, like a leading man for a while yeah and his films are very niche yes you know that's right but the fact that he came back and i think they both did a stellar job mm -hmm. and especially jay like obviously silent bob he barely speaks throughout the film of course but jay being the fundamental dialogue mm -hmm. i think it worked really well and yeah. you know we didn't get it here in a cinema as in australia well, we did very <sighs> one briefly. night one yeah. session and they told us the day before that's right and because <sighs> Like, they essentially didn't have the budget to worldwide distribute it, so they toured with it in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This film, I was expecting it to have a fairly low budget kind of quality to it. No. No. Yeah, it's like, yeah. A, it's a solid movie. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm not surprised. Obviously, like, the Kevin cameo Smith is a filmmaker. That's so what I'm saying, yeah. We expect Obviously, the cameos quality. are great. Yeah. The, the fourth wall breaking winks that mm. are completely obvious are oh, fantastic. I yeah. I, I really enjoy but, this movie. Yeah, no. But I didn't don't, expect to, but no, I No, but don't be surprised that it has heart. Kevin Smith is a literal writer as well as being yeah. a filmmaker. And but like, how they portrayed that were, had, was more heartfelt than I expected it to be. Mm, yeah. The growth with Jay's character no, but, was more than I expected it to be. That's right. But with his history of Jersey Girl, yeah. and um, I've already forgotten the other one, unfortunately. But even Tusk. Clerk. Yeah. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> but um, <laughs> even Clerk's too, man. That, oh, that, that, yeah. is a, that, that, that story wrapped around all the dick jokes and sex jokes and all that shit. Yeah. That's a love story. Oh, yeah, Like start sure. to finish, like yep. 100%. So, no, I'm not surprised at all. Now, yep. we actually, some serendipitous, uh, watched a couple of things that we can both talk about. That's right. Mm. Uh, do you want to start with the- We'll start with- The uh, first- uh, Jingle holiday, Bells? Yeah, the yeah. first holiday film of the year. I guess, but I- I, I I honestly, um, I think, I don't think I watched the trailer leading into this one. I didn't. But Taylor put it on. I was like, yeah, I'll sit with you and stare at my phone while you watch this film. And, and then... I was hooked on this movie. Yeah, too. I know. This movie, this next one we're about to talk about mm. is the latest in the new Netflix romantic comedy films, mm. uh, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about more in a moment. But oh, essentially course. the ratings are on like around a six to a 6.5, essentially. It's yeah, not getting huge reviews, but yeah. this is a fun movie and yes. I really liked it. And yes, no, absolutely. Um, Emma Roberts and uh, Aussie. Luke uh, Bracey. Luke Bracey, who essentially is talking how Chris Hemsworth talks. Oh, for as sure. As an Australian in film, you know, like- Chris Hemsworth plays himself in Jay and Silent Bob Reboot for a very brief moment. I knew it. And it's yeah. funny. Yes. yes. No, exactly. But no, so uh, basically the premise is that these are two people who around the holiday times, uh, whether they're in a new relationship or just don't have a relationship, they get grilled by their family for being lonely or they get dragged to some crazy bitches, you know, holiday gathering. And they're yeah. like, fuck the holidays, hate this shit. We just need essentially a ring in. You know, like yeah. somebody to take and just go, all right, this is my person. Shut the fuck up. Like, a date on a holiday. You know, a it, holiday. Date. Oh, a oh. clever pun with a colon in the middle, even though it doesn't have a colon in the no, middle. It doesn't. I wrote it with a colon in the middle <laughs> because it sounds better. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what they do. And I thought this was going to be a Christmas film, but it covers all of the American big holidays. That's right. And they go around together and essentially just, you know, <laughs> they hate each other. This is just a casual thing, just to, you know, no sex tons or anything like that. No, that's right. Just purely business arrangement to shut people up. Yep. 
and, and I they, think they, they like each other. They start to realise that mm. there may be some connections happening there, and one of them mm. realises it, and one of them's trying to avoid it because of the agreement that mm. they have. And then they split away, and then they come together, and it's all lovely, dovey, and heartwarming. Exactly. Everything in this film you've seen in every other holiday romantic comedy exactly. that's ever existed. Exactly. Um, I, I remember watching the final scene, and I was like, "Just say no," and he's like, "Nah," and, and, just he, and I was like. Yes, <laughs> that was fantastic. But yeah. no, but then he yeah, turns no, around. It, it, yeah. it, this is a serviceable, like, romantic comedy film. Yeah, it's got some good lols in it. It's got some good romance in that. It tells a very cliche story, but it's in a new way. So I'm okay with this. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, had, no, I had no problem with it at all. Everything you just said is mm. absolutely true, yeah. and I absolutely agree with it too. Mm. I like Emma Roberts. Yes, I've never seen Luke Bracey before, but she uh, he was <sighs> great. By the way, Emma Roberts, she's still fucking twelve. She still looks 16. Go like, look on her Instagram. She's heavily pregnant and no, rocking it. I know. But, <laughs> like, seriously, I watch her in this and I'm like, oh, this is uncomfortable. He's like, really? He's like 36 and she's like 20, maybe. Okay, like, I'm well, like, oof. You know, like, she just, she has not aged a day. She's Since the after first herself. time I saw her back in Hotel for Dogs when I worked at a video store. Oh, you worked at a video oh, store? Really I did. But yeah. anyway, so yeah. But it's fun. It's on Netflix right now. It's a it's a good start to the holiday season. Romantic Absolutely. comedies. That's right. Hmm. So as you said, it covers all hmm. holidays. It starts at Christmas and it ends at Christmas. And even the poster itself has like a Christmas tree. So it's, it is very much. A, it's definitely appropriate for its release. It's you hmm. can watch it around Christmas. And it's I think well also because it covers this, all bases. I was gonna say, but this it, story cover goes full circle from Christmas to Christmas. That's what I just so, said. Oh no no no! I thought sorry. I thought you said it's. Yeah, I said it starts at Christmas and it ends at Christmas. My bad. It comes yes. all the way around. Yes. So it's it's a good way to like it's not mm. the, it's not the kind of movie you would watch on Christmas night when you're in the mood for a no. fully Christmas film. Yes. But it's good to lead into it. It's a good appetizer. It's a good appetizer. It's, it's, it's a good appetizer for the holiday season. Yes, all for right. sure. One more that we both uh, yes got the chance to watch. We got to Same watch way. Auntie Donna's Big Old House of Fun on yes. Netflix right now from mm -hmm. the boys down under, Mark Brandon and Zachary. You've mm -hmm. fucking done it, legends. What have they done? They've made it to Netflix. They did. That's yes. right. And in a big way too, seeing as uh, this, I had no idea who Auntie Donna's, uh, Auntie Donna was. And I'm like, glad you do now. No, exactly. That's right. And I'm glad I do as well because I was watching this and I, like I said, I knew nothing about them. I didn't know where they came from or anything like that. And I'm watching the show and I go, okay, they're clearly Australian. And then I'm like, but this is clearly filmed in America, <laughs> but this has clearly got some pretty big guest stars. Yeah. This is on Netflix the fuck is this and there was all of a sudden there was um uh, references to four and twenty pies and yeah. stuff like that and i'm like what the fuck like th this is great yeah it's it's so it's such an offbeat brand of comedy it's an overtly it's dumb and obvious brand of childish humor which is but it's only for adults and it's hilarious but it's intelligent yeah, it it's is. intelligent stupidity yeah and it's fucking fantastic yeah and I can see why they had Ed Helms or Egg Helms. Egg Helms. <laughs> Sorry, Egg Helms. And yeah. um yeah, no, I can see why they have people attached to this and why they're gaining traction as like a comedy troupe, which is fantastic. And yeah. I believe you said off air from Melbourne. Yeah, a little bit of backstory. Mm, yes, they're please. just a straight up sketch comedy group who started out on YouTube and Facebook making like short videos, sketch comedy videos. Mm. And they've also had like podcasts and things like that as well. Yeah, of course. And they've been doing it for years and they've mm. had the few hits like the few viral hits here and there. I yep. think the big one was them, which anybody who's watching right now who knows who Auntie Donna is, I think I've had a bit too much pud. Oh, you want a little bit of pud? Oh, I'll take a little bit more pud, mate. I'll take a little bit more pud. Uh, you know, okay, right. There's yeah. this really classic fucking Christmas joke about them serving yeah. Christmas pudding to each other. And okay. it's their, their jokes are very hyper accentuated, but they're, they're relatable in crazy ways. And you, you go back and you see the kind of humor you see in the big old house of fun. Yeah. Just- Picture that, but in your kitchen, yeah. you know, and it's just these three dudes making these crazy fucking videos with yeah. good good production value. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they started out very small. <laughs> they've they've worked their way through. <clears throat> they've they've gained a big enough traction to be noticed by these guys. Mm. And yeah, they've now released a a six episode season of mm. them essentially in a house getting up to crazy stupid shit, yeah. like late thirty dudes doing it, crazy shit it, it, before the release of this they have videos online and mark banano the skinny bearded fella yeah, yeah he streams yeah. on twitch as well oh nice yeah um he's, also he's i thinking, confused him for andy sandberg off the netflix poster at first <laughs> okay just saying he's mm. his twitch handle is a very polite gamer nice. but anyway like some of their sketches before the release of this was them 
um, refreshing Netflix for like 10 hours or whatever it is until it showed up. And one of them was also, they made a video of them cold calling random numbers, a thousand net random numbers, trying to be like call sales staff, just trying to promote, like ask questions about oh, their comedy preferences and whether they would watch it. Yeah. And the video is like them getting told to fuck off or, yeah. mate, I don't have time for this. So uh, what is your preference on comedy? You know, like- yeah. It, yeah, so if you liked this, hmm. I urge you to just look up Auntie Donna on Facebook and just watch their catalogue. I plan on it because yeah. I had a great time with this. And it was the kind of show where I was like, all right, I'll put this on and I'll literally, like you said about um, watching Holiday, I'll yeah. just sit on my phone, like play a game and that and just look up every now and then, but listen, you know, like yeah. listen in and that. I could not focus on my phone because I need- Morning Brown, Morning Brown. What oh, the fuck the- is Morning Brown? Oh man, the amount, like <laughs> one of my favorite ones was the game show where with, um, uh, I think his name was Pete Paul. Oh, you I might, might not you have might watched not that. Be- Is that the final episode? I've watched no, it no, 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 no. Mid, mid-range or something. Yeah, but okay. no, just the game show where he, where he pauses before he finishes the question. Oh, yeah. And, and, and uh, who's the bald one? Uh, is that Broden? Ma- Broden? Broden, yeah. yeah. And he's getting so fucking Wait, angry. Wait, no, that's where they're like, they've got, they've got Zach and they've got yeah. Mark and they're like, Things you put in your mouth, things you put in your mouth, and they're talking about like whole entire sentences. He's like, oh, it's on the board. You know? Yeah, is that the one you're talking no, about? No, 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 that's, a different that, one? that's another okay. one. Yeah, no, but no, I, I enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this, and I, I look forward to seeing more from these guys. And I get the chance to going back because I've got you've a back got, catalog of stuff. Got, yeah, catalogs to watch through, dude. Yeah, and, and I look forward to that. And I, I also just love seeing Australians succeed overseas. And these yeah. guys have made a big impression, apparently, in the comedy game so you yeah on, i think they're gonna be around for a while man you go on youtube and look mm. up their their live show that was filmed at the enmore theater in sydney yeah and dude like they they put it on hey oh i can imagine so oh. my problem with big old house of fun because mm. i'm a fan of them i've been watching them for a while some yeah. of the skits in it have been direct skits from what yeah, they've done so like, in re- their live yeah, shows repurpose for the yeah. show yeah. Yeah. The, the bit where broden kelly is playing as uh, ellen degeneres oh and Zach, yeah you know yeah. taking him around the world and yeah. shoots the guy that's from one of their live skits i'm yeah. like i was watching it yeah. watching a the third dis- toyota corolla <laughs> that's right like i was watching that going okay i've seen all these jokes <laughs> yeah but that's cool other no, people but, won't no, other but, people haven't but but you would have still had the enjoyment of going damn this is on netflix oh yeah it's like, like, i'm super proud that's fucking dope yeah exactly they don't 100%. know me at all but no, i'm like yeah my boys no exactly and and like they've made a new fan out of me that wants to go and see more of them it's just so irreverent and just it's it's uniquely stupidly intelligent go in, watch the, in the go most watch flattering the way yeah yeah no i'm sure i will enjoy them but yeah no only donald's big old house, house of fun yeah brand new australian american hybrid sketch show from three very talented For melbourneians sure. absolutely definitely so, check absolutely. it out absolutely but anyway i think that's about it yeah, I think we're out well, of time. You think you're out of time? Well, yeah. we're one hour and 20 in. I think we've got a bit of time. No, nah, we don't have time for anything. Yeah. I think it's time to just- <gasps> Oh, Benny Sue, my cousin wife's time to head on down to the trailer park. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for my favorite part of the week, trailer park, where we look at the freshest trailers that have come to the interwebs in the past week, technically two. Um, and it is time to uh, break these down, review them, and think whether or not these are going to be big summer blowouts or big summer blunders. Are That's they going right. to be successful or are they going to be failures? We'll find out. Thank mm. you for saying big summer blunders or big summer blowout, because knowing me, I would have forgotten what the rating 100%, is. 100%. You at would have gone, end. I give this a yolf. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> no, no, that's later, bros. All right. Now, it is time for Trailer Park. So, Betty Sue, let's get on down there. Okay. Happiest season. Mm. Our first trailer off the park this week comes from writer-director Cleo Duvall as we get the perfect holiday film made for 2020. Kristen Stewart <laughs> and Mackenzie Davis lead the way in this Christmas film centered around a couple, Harper and Abby, heading to Harper's parents' house for Christmas. But right before they arrive, Harper drops the bomb on Abby that her family doesn't know that she is gay and, oh boy, the hiding my lesbian lover hijinks begins. Stacked to the brim with a talented cast including Alison Brie, Aubrey Plaza, Mary Steenberg and Victor Garber and Dan Levy, just to name a few, this Christmas film is sure to be full of enough heart, laughs and in the closet jokes anyone can handle. Unfortunately, coming to Hulu November 26. Yeah, so... Mm. Everything you mentioned about this one being a very 2020s film is absolutely correct. In mm. saying that, I really like everybody who's cast in this. I know. Say what you want about Kristen Stewart. She's fucking great. Mackenzie yes. Davis equally is good. Alison Brie, it's great to see her we, back. We chucked her on the 2C3 pod hit list, Kristen Stewart, yes. after her performances this year, man. She's For been sure. phenomenal. Charlie's mm. Angels is one of my top picks this year. I know I'm the only person no, on planet Earth who liked that movie. Even but Underwater, I think- Underwater Man. She oh, was a, a lead star in that film and had a lot of solo screen time and yeah. lived up to the acting. That's right, absolutely. Mm. So Kristen Stewart, Mackenzie yes. Davis, Alison Brie, Aubrey Plaza, oh. everybody else we mentioned. But yes. also, shout out to Dan Levy. Yes. I've never yeah. seen Dan Levy before, but it's clear- You haven't? 
it's clear that he's Eugene Levy's son. Yeah, and spitting oh, image. No, exactly. No, he's uh, most famous for uh, Shit's Creek on Netflix. Haven't seen it. But yeah, no, there's yeah. like six or seven seasons of it, man. Yeah. But no, no, he's a, a hilarious fucking actor, and you're 100 percent spot on. Eugene Levy's son. You yeah. look at him and go, "Oh, that's Eugene Levy." If he was young, handsome, and gay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, you know what? I, I mean, I get the idea that it's telling a very mm. cliche story of a couple who are like trying to hide yeah. from the one. One one of them is trying to hide where the other one is honest mm. about herself, and they need to hide the fact that they're lesbian couple in front of the the boomer parents yeah around so christmas course. time exactly. who are they really bringing? i wonder how it's going to end oh my god a mm. shock and fucking awe it's 2020 acceptance in saying that though yes i, I really want to watch this oh so do i man right i really fuck it that's why hulu i'm like come on hulu hurry up we will literally have to get hulu when it does if it ever does come out here yeah because we need all the services that's, that's just what right. we do it's it's, ty- mm. it's the type of film like we just talked about with yes. Holiday where it does hit mm. on all the beats around a Christmas romantic comedy film that we've seen a hundred thousand times before yeah. and I like these movies leading yes. into Christmas they're yes. fucking great fun they get you in the mood Fair- yeah that's and right and for Christmas that's <laughs> Ooh, especially, the, especially the leads. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So leading up to Christmas and telling those stories yes. of, of, you mm. know, heartbreak and love around Christmas and how yeah. they're going to handle it. We've seen it before, but the cast is great. And the story, yes, I've seen it before, it's, but I want to see it again. It, it's enough. This, there, there will be a movie like this every year for the next 20 years and yeah. I will want to watch them all. That's right. So Happiest Season. If yes. you haven't checked out the trailer for that, yes. definitely look it up. It is one that I want to mm-hmm. see. I'm going to give it a mm. big summer. Well- on the grand scheme of things, it may end up being a blunder. Yes. But me personally, I like it. I, I think, like the idea of I it. Think, I'm going to give it a blowout. I th- I'm going to give it a blowout as well because I think it will be a success for Hulu at this time of year. Yeah. So, yeah, good timing. Second film this week is Vanguard. Oh, boy. Yep. yep. Jackie Chan is back, baby. Our second trailer this week sees the legendary and aging Kung Fu star on the big screen leading the way in this huge, bombastic, colossal action flick setting the world on fire. I mean, probably not. But hey, it's Jackie Chan. Chan leads a special organization named Vanguard, designed to protect important people all over the world. The trailer even brags about this in big letters on the screen, traveling from England to South Africa to Abu Dhabi and more. What a budget. <clears throat> Cliche action scenes and a random line fill the rest of the trailer, and I think we get the picture as to what to expect from this popcorn film coming to cinemas later this year. This film, Vanguard, is nothing but pure popcorn madness. That's all it is, my friend. It's, that is all it's, it is. Uh, is this, yeah, Chinese? This is straight up Chinese Michael Bay. Oh, 100%. 100%. Oh, I'm sorry, but if a trailer brags about locations- Oh, yeah. You, it's, it's you're flaunting budget. Underground? Yeah. No, 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 no. That's right. And when you, when you say an aging Jackie Chan- Yes. Yes, Jackie Chan is aging, but in this film, it looks like they try so hard to make that not the fact. Oh, 100%. I'm sorry. He drop kicks a motherfucker off a moving jet ski? But nah. not only that, he's got such a smooth, oh, unwrinkled they, face, he, jet black hair. No, the dude is like I, old now. I, I bet it took he's nine like, months to get those wrinkles out in post. He's like <laughs> Stallone, where mm. he's like- He's the he's the Japanese Stallone. He's old as fuck, but he still kicks ass. I literally in a million years would never have compared those two. Well, there you go. <laughs> I just it, and you can't understand mm. either of them. <laughs> so bingo, there it is. Anyway, There's listen. The comparison. If, you, if you watch the trailer to this, don't go in expecting a heartfelt drama. This is just straight up nonstop action from start to finish. Yeah. And as much as I try to watch these films and mm. turn my brain off and have a good time with them because I inherently love mm-hmm. action movies. Mm-hmm. I like guns and violence and shooting yes. and explosions and fast cars. Mm. But <laughs> I like there to be some substance yeah. to sink my teeth into it's and this doesn't to look like it has no. any of it. No. Big summer blunder. Big summer blunder. Nothing, nothing, nothing yeah. about this does it for me. Yeah. Not even the popcorn appeal. Yeah. Like, yeah. If, I mean, I like this, popcorn. this could possibly be, I mean, we've talked about this for a long time being our choice of seeing a foreign film in big screen. <laughs> oh, but this doesn't cut the mustard. No. This is a, I mean, fair enough, it's a Chinese production, but this is, no. this would be like seeing Six Hundred Grand on the big screen. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I know, right? I bet you five bucks James Franco dies in the first five minutes of this as well. <laughs> right. He's one of the special people they try to protect and Jackie Chan's like, no, my failed mission. Yeah. Uh, um, but anyway. Man, no. like, listen, let's, I'm let's, sh- th- there's yeah. definitely a market for this because people love those yeah, straight it's called China. Up- <laughs> like, I'm sorry, it'll make bank in China. Oh, yeah, of course I don't will. care. But in terms of international distribution, there are those people who just love- crazy action movies and i don't think it's because of the podcast because i Mm. tell myself all the time yeah like we're not here to sit there and pick apart a movie for its flaws in terms of its pacing and its cinematography like if a movie is fun like holiday we'll love it yeah 
We'll watch it. Simple. Yeah, it's a good movie. Simple. It's, it's fun. Yeah. It's enjoyable. Yeah. So there are people out there who will watch this and go, yeah, it was, it's great, whatever. But I, I'm, I'm not interested. Yeah. No. I would much rather watch Happiest Season. Yes. Well, maybe you might want to watch the next one on the list, shall we see? I very mm. much doubt it. But anyway, <gasps> Wild Mountain Time. Time Ooh. spelt with a... H and a Y. Yes. Mm. Mm. Q Mitchell doing a terrible Irish accent at some point during this description. Oh, no. No. Wild Mountain Time is our third trailer this week. And as we see Mr. Fifty Shades himself, Jamie Dornham and Emily Blunt play Irish folk who grew up as neighbours their whole lives. Now as adults and with a land dispute on the horizon, is time running out for the two obviously meant to be together pair before Blunt's father, played by Christopher Walken, sells his land to handsome America jo- American John Hand only the bright sunny sky of Ireland has the answer coming to demand in theatres December 11 there seems to be pot of gold sorry I had to (laughs) pot of gold there seems to be I know I'm sorry Uh, you offended an entire country I know I've I've, I've done that many times before it's fine I Um, offend many (laughs) Um, dude the ageing I mean I wouldn't say age but the age look of the three main actors yep. seems a bit off you've got yep. Jamie Dornan who seems 12 and then yes. you've got Emily Blunt who's 15 and then John yep. Hamm who's 45 but still handsome <laughs> so and I then don't... you've got Christopher Walken who looks 26 <laughs> and, for sure. and, and a babe absolutely <laughs> crushing it yeah yeah. but anyway um, so mm. there's obviously that love triangle going on between there's the Jamie Dornan who plays the typical Irish farmer who do- Scottish farmer where was this said again Ireland I- uh, Ireland <laughs> I was going to say Irish Ireland. I'm like say Ireland Irish Irish Billy Irish yeah. and I believe Jamie Dornan is actually Irish I believe so I believe yeah. so at yeah. the very least UK like at the very least English <laughs> European so he's close he's definitely yeah. from planet Earth I bet he's um, Bulgarian yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah so you've got the three mm. characters and there's this love triangle and they're trying mm-hmm. to either figure out whether they need to escape this particular very rural part of wherever it is and or whether she should stick around with this young handsome man or go with the older handsome man yeah. anyway just John Hamm Christopher Hand. Walken does not approve of, of punctuation Jamie Dornham <laughs> yeah. but uh, he likes Ham. he does mm. in saying that like John Ham, just give him a Batman role please like it oh, doesn't have to be a tie in just just let him play like he's an age so ba- fucking attractive too dude he's chiseled and oh, he's handsome and he's got a oh, I know he's John the kind Hamm- of guy I look at going fuck you fuck you <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine ectoplasm in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, Shit, but Wild this Mountain film. Time, mm. yes, spelt with a TH. Do you mm. like please tell me you know why that's spelt with a TH? Yeah, because of the herb. Yes, and who what's Emily Blunt's character's name? Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> Is it basil or mustard? <laughs> no. Ro- is this, it basil? this is the classic tale of Rosemary. Partly. Oh. No fucking way. Is her name Rosemary? Yes. Bullshit. Uh, no. I watched the trailer. trailer. Rosemary Muldon. Oh Muldoon. my God. I wish his name was fucking Basil. Like oh, Jamie wouldn't Dornan. that be great? Oh my God. And what will Christopher then, Walker's character be? Oh, he, he, he would have to be... Uh, uh, Parsley. Parsley? Yeah. Actually, Parsley. What's a, what's no, a horrible yeah. word? No, and then John Hamm turns up, but he's like a hipster John Hamm, and, he, <laughs> and his name is Sage. Sage, yes. Oh, man. Yeah. And then Dill walks up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and you go Hollywood, Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, wild, anyway, wild uh, mountain. Some blunder, man. Yeah, I, wild, I, I can't get into that. Wild mountain, rosemary and thyme, <laughs> classic love story, whatever. I, pff, yeah, both. It's not for me. I'm sure it'll be fine. But oh, but anyway, the pick, right. pick for us was the lesbian centric happiest season. But the last one. Wait, what? There's one more, my friend. Did you not watch the trailer for Super Intelligence? Oh, I did. Yes, oh, of course. Good. Yeah, okay, sorry, good, 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 good. Yeah. All right, Super Intelligence is our final trailer this week. We have. Super couple Melissa McCarthy and Ben Falcone. Falcone, I misspelt him. Falcone. Yes, Falcone are back together again for McCarthy's next leading comical role in Super Intelligence. When technology, voiced by James Corden, uh, yep, yeah, decides it is going to destroy humanity, it offers the human race one last chance at survival by monitoring monitoring regular schmo Carol Peters, played by McCarthy, to see whether or not she can be the saving grace. Full of all the regular McCarthy hijinks you would expect to see with her signature brand of physical comedy and witty one-liners, be prepared for doomsday. Or not, I guess. Yes, we will see. Or oh, fucking not on the 26th of November as it's a HBO Max property. Yeah, so we won't be able to watch it. Unfortunately. Mm. No, I, I think it looked fun, dude. Uh, listen, listen, I I would... think it had potential, except James Corden. That, that's Ugh. my thoughts exactly. Listen, yeah. I've never watched James Corden's TV show, and mm. I, I, like, I, I've 
I, I can't say that I've tried to watch either. Yeah. But I'm I, I just can't. personally not a fan. No, we've, we've spoken about this since day dot. Yeah. Both of you and I are just like, eh. Yeah, like, I get that he does Peter Rabbit and kids probably no, gravitate I, towards I remember, that. But- I remember when the Peter Rabbit movie got delayed and you yeah. and I literally were both like, fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. Yeah. Fuck this. <laughs> Fuck this Why movie. is it in the news? Because we've got to scrap it to barrel. Fuck this movie that it's not meant for us. Yeah. Exactly. But Anyway, yeah. listen, I mm. like Miss Mac- Melissa McCarthy. Mm-hmm. I like her style of comedy. Mm-hmm. She's been the same in most of them except for The Kitchen where she was great in exactly. that terrible and movie. As we've discussed, she was on my fuck you list. Yeah. But after The Kitchen, I started to turn. In and an overall and I'm crap movie, the mm. performances from her and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss-, Moss with Devin, mm-hmm. like, no, we're, you got it right. Yeah, like, yeah, we're yes. great. But yeah. listen, like I mm. get what they're doing with this, mm-hmm. and you would think it'd be something that I'd be interested in. Yeah, but because like most of the film is about I'm, James Gordon being like, I'm a super intelligent. But yeah, you could and, turn things around if you show me love. I'm kind of like, it oh, seems like he has what? a lot of lines as well. Yeah, so, so that's the one downfall. If they could change mm. that voice to like Sylvester Stallone, oh, I'd be down. In the summer, <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvester. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, um uh, big summer blunder because we don't get to see it anyway. That's true. But in saying Fuck that, it. I probably wouldn't. No. Yeah. It's yeah, just, fair. As fair. I said, like I like Melissa McCarthy. I wouldn't pick it for Yasuo Pass. No, that's for sure. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, speaking of Yasuo Pass, oh, I think it's I time think it'll, to oh, <laughs> this time of the night we need to sing. It's time for Yas or Pass, excited or but blinded. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Yas or Pass, excited or but blinded. Yeah. Now, this is the segment where we look at the films coming to theatres this weekend. Yes. For our local region, but check your local guidances yes. for what is coming out near you. Now, we missed last week's episode, of course, mm-hmm. but we still both communicated enough to know what film we were going to see, and it was always going to be a given. Oh, yeah, So sure. make sure to head yeah. on over to YouTube and look out for the review for Freaky. Absolutely. Bloody House is latest with else. Vince Vaughn. That's right. But not only was there Freaky, we also missed out on The Comeback Trail, which is a Zach Braff and Tommy Lee Jones film about the yes. stuff man that they wanted to claim an insurance job on and we did it for trailer park a few months back and it's out with yeah, multiple sessions it's Tommy and Lee Jones yeah exactly and looks- I, I really want to see it honestly yeah. like I'm just saying but so that one's there in the back pocket and maybe this week I don't know it does look good and if no. you get to go see it like that's totally fine whether I'll get the time to oh, fit it in no, no, amongst no, 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 our no, no, choices no. I was gonna say we've got one that we're, we already know what's going on oh I'm definitely Ooh. I'm so fucking hyped yes. for, the, for the choice this week which we'll mm. get to in a moment but in yes. saying that if I get the chance to see two movies, I definitely do want to see the comeback yeah, trailer. No, it looks it great. Do, it does look like a but lot of fun. But if you see it, mm. just let me know how good it is. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. Absolutely. Anyway. All right. Now, kicking off the three options we have this week, we're going to kick it off with, uh, it may not be a Christmas film, but it is a romantic drama. Yes, of course. Coming for the holiday season where emotions are high. <laughs> it is all my life. Mm. Now, this film stars one of your favorite people. Who? Mm. Uh, Jessica Roth. Roth. Roth? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I might be completely mistaken as to who she is. Let me just uh, double check that before I get carried I, away. I but watched anyway. the trailers of these before recording tonight and I mm. was looking at her no, going. I was completely right. Yeah. It is Jessica Roth, but what's yeah. she from? Happy Death Day. Of How's course. that? How's them apples, my friend? Of course. I was going to say, I knew come on, I my dude. fucking saw her from yeah, somewhere. Exactly. I just. Oh, I had another you part to get on. about it early. Oh, no, that might have been on YouTube. But anyway. You know what? Before you get into the whole thing yes. of all my life, mm. you pointing out the fact that that's her mm. has kind of swayed my opinion on this film. Yeah. Well, you need. Have you watched the trailer? I have. Yes. Uh, and I almost cried in the fucking trailer. Okay, so I didn't. So the, the- <laughs> <laughs> I have a mustache. I didn't. Yeah. I got testosterone <laughs> with you, my blood. Yeah. Anyway, listen. Mm. The, the the story of all my life is essentially mm. these characters that uh, this young adorable couple, young adorable couple, meet mm. out of nowhere, and yep. then they they it's de- a love story. Yes, they, it's mm. a love story. They develop their relationship over time and eventually plan to get married. However, mm. all of a sudden, he wakes up with cancer. Yeah. How many times mm. have we seen that before? Yeah, I know, but it's a white chicken and Asian. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. No, both but, young, attractive human beings. But, but all jokes aside, to me, this story does look uh, heartfelt. 
obviously. Yes. And I do think that the acting will be key in this one. I think the acting will be superb because Jessica Roth, now you point out who it actually is. Exactly. I've only seen her in two things and I've loved her. Exactly. In both of those things. And I believe in our YouTube review uh, coming up for the Blumhouse Double, you mentioned that one of the key points that you think that that was just above freaky was the fact of her performance. Of her performance, absolutely. And That's so, why I'm man, thinking. we've got a new one coming to cinemas with her in it. It's a nice romantic uh, drama. Yeah. So I'm- with the heart and it, man, if we got to go together, would you like to see me cry like a baby? <laughs> because I literally almost cried in the trailer when he talks about if, if, if we get bad news, we should get a dog. Yeah. And then she turns up and he's like, he's all ours. I almost fucking lost it there, man. And then in a sequel, like five years later, somebody kills the dog and then she gets an ax and she's, she punches into some cement and Wait she pulls out, pulls out a, a box of guns and she's the new female John Wick. <gasps> <gasps> Hollywood hit us up, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh man, killer bar. But yeah. anyway, um, this one is, it's a yass for me, like a strong yass. I have no doubt mm-hmm. that this is going to be a fine film. Mm-hmm. It's just the arc that they're going for. I've seen it a billion times before. A billion? Come on. I mean- No, no, I get what you maybe mean. Maybe- I, I get it. It's, it's, it's to a degree. Million and it's a half. To, it's to a couple of degrees. It is a cliche story. Yeah. I get that. But- Everything's going perfect. Come All on, of a sudden, man. ugh, cancer. It's not like yeah, a fucking- You didn't but- get hit by a car. It was like, <clears throat> okay, listen, like, I get it. But I just- it's, uh, Have I you know. ever seen a romantic drama that's this sad centered around a wedding? Huh? Huh? <laughs> yes. I know. Yes, Shut I up. Have. Play along, you dickhead. <laughs> yas. Pass. Excited. Listen, I'm going to give it a yas. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. not screaming to see this one, but I'm sure it looks fine. And I've been proven mm-hmm. wrong by a lot of, as I said earlier, like mm. I've, I went to see After and then, mm. sorry, After We Collided. And then mm. I saw After and I was pleasantly surprised by those films. Yeah. I have no doubt that this is going to be a great film and mm-hmm. the acting and the writing is going to be top notch yes indeed it's just in comparison to the other options yep. it's like if for example it was only this and not the last option yeah uh sorry no if it was this and not the next option no no no. i'm gonna put that one in last because we know oh, we're picking you? it yeah okay so to confuse everybody even mm. further if there was two options this week <laughs> and they were both the lesser choices <laughs> it would be this one yes so yes. i will watch it one day yes definitely but definitely. The next one. Yeah. Let's let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, so I am reversing them. Yes, so you're go for aware. It. Now yeah. the next one is one that uh uh screams nightmare fuel. Oh <laughs> boy. <laughs> now the next one is Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Hey, everybody's favorite adorable little puppet boy man thing. <laughs> okay, Pinocchio. But yeah. this this isn't your uh uh, uh uh Disney animated uh special uh yeah, no, this is a uh, French uh, Italian film, my bad. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, even just looking at the still pictures of this, it's already nightmare fuel. This movie, I saw the trailer cause I was like, Pinocchio, maybe they're just putting on like the mm. Disney original or I'm pretty yeah, sure no. there was a live action version many years ago, but I can't really remember it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it was called Geppetto or some shit. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, yeah, it could have been. Or just big it, nose. Big nose. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Fucking dirty, rotten dog yeah. fucking liar. Uh, Owen Wilson. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So no, this is a brand new a bit Pinoc- of a bung nose. <laughs> bit of a <laughs> that's a throwback yeah big one um <laughs> just fucking vision or some shit anyway wonk moving nose. on a wonk, wonk, nose. wonk nose i had a bit of a wonk nose i had a, had a button you had for a that. sound bite for that yeah still right. do somewhere anyway so, pinocchio yeah pinocchio pinocchio your nose th- <laughs> i couldn't finish the sentence but i had I'll to piss off anyway <laughs> listen there's a new live action iteration mm. of pinocchio as we said it's an italian film so it looks mm. like it's dubbed in english mm. but this is terrifying oh my lord is it ever now this is when 2020 goes wrong oh like boy. this is this is using technology oh to boy. its detriment so the original Ooh. story of pinocchio i watched a youtube video on this the other day just i don't know why this is happening within the same week but yeah maybe it's, someone made a, a video about pinocchio because of this film's existence but uh. essentially the original story the original original story of pinocchio mm. is yes he is a puppet yes he comes to life but at the very end He's hung by a rope th- around his neck because of bad boy suffers bad consequences. Yeah. It's a horrifying tale. If mm. you f- if you do bad things, you're going to cop it. Yeah. And then Disney rewrote Pinocchio to be a happy-go-lucky. Yeah. yeah. There's still some terrifying things that happen in that. He just wants to be a real boy. A real boy. I'm a real boy. And I just day- think, when I think of Pinocchio, I'll think of Shrek. Yeah, so do I. I'm not a puppet. I'm, I'm a real boy. boy. <laughs> Exactly. And then, yeah, of course, like in the Disney mm. version, you know, he does become a real boy and it's all magical and blah, 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 blah. Mm. Uh, 
This is taking it back to Dude. its roots and yeah. being utterly terrifying. If oh. pause the podcast, yes. and those watching live, because we live stream this podcast now, I'm going to take three seconds of silence for you to just quickly Google Pinocchio while I stall this for a moment <laughs> to give you enough time to just Could Google- have asked for my opinion. Just Google tw- Pinocchio 2020, and now I'll ask you for your opinion. It's terrifying. It's t- utterly I terrifying. I want to see it, though. I I honest mm, nah. dude I, no I I I want to see it because nah. it's terrifying nah. <laughs> like it's rated M and it's Pinocchio wait it, it is rated M it's yeah screen. oh okay yeah it's rated M motherfucker I yeah. didn't know that oh no, yeah it's not made for kiddies it's uh, rated for mature audiences I thought this was a kiddie film <laughs> which was I thought this was going to be like one of those maybe seventies mm. l- late early eighties kids films, which is definitely not made for kids kind of mm. deal. Like, yeah, but, no, no, but okay. seriously, it's nightmare fuel. I'm going to give it a yas because Hey, foreign film and potential, you know, nightmare fuel. So live action mix. Pinocchio, 1996. That's uh, the one I was Robert thinking Williams? of. Was he in that? <laughs> no, that's, um, Hook. Peter Pan. I know it's Hook. Hook. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, the adventures of Pinocchio. Oh, right. Yeah. And Billy Zane. <laughs> anyway, he's yeah. an actual puppet. He's not like a. See, if you look at the the poster, like you remember that Pinocchio? No, that's horrifying. Yeah, but this one is way more. In anyway, so, I think any version of Pinocchio that you'll get that is live action, mm. it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be nightmare fuel regardless. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. All right. Now, anyway. moving on to our final option this week, and the one that we already agreed upon about four weeks ago for Trailer Park. Oh, man. And we get it, and it's coming, and we've been seeing the posters and the trailers for the last few weeks at Event Cinemas, and mm. now it's time to go and see Fat Man. This has- na 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 Fat Man. Uh, He's clearly- gonna kill Walton Goggins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so Fat Man was a surprise Trailer Park hit yeah. of Mel Gibbs, who plays a disgruntled Santa Claus. His name's Chris. Chris. He's not even credited as, like, Kringle or anything, or Claus, or yeah. Santa. He's Chris. But essentially, in this universe, and he is Santa Claus. Exactly. And Mrs. Claus is a black chick whose name is not Mrs. Claus or Kringle or nothing. Yeah. It's just this disgruntled old hunter dude who lives in the forest who just kills motherfuckers. And delivers presents! Essentially, yeah. Like, he's been, good he's been delivering presents, but over mm. the years, he's more experienced and he's kind of just had enough. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he's getting oh, to that point time. and then a kid takes out a hit on him. Yeah. Honestly, because he got a lump of coal. Honestly, out of, the, out of the movies that we've seen this year, and mm. even though we've only oh, really God. fanned out about this one, <laughs> yeah. this honestly has to be the one I'm most excited for this year. <laughs> really? I am so looking forward to <laughs> this, dude. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. Like, even more than Tanette. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Tanette was like, okay, it's the next Chris Nolan. Like, I get the hype, but for me- Oh, yeah, no, no, Like, no. I was going to see it regardless mm. because it's the next big- I was big numb to Tanette, really. So was I. I was just kind of like, wow, a big movie. Mm. I was expecting mm. it to be what it was. But exactly. But this to come out of nowhere, it's Mel mm. Gibson. He's he's a hardened Santa yeah. Claus. And Walt on Goggins. Walt the on best, Goggins. biggest teeth in Hollywood. Right. Fuck, I love that, this dude. This film, I've talked about this even on my pod- Oh, mm. not my podcast, my podcast. <laughs> wow, you have a uh, podcast? My, you should hear about it. Uh, <laughs> On my I Twitch stream, I am so keen mm. for this. This yeah. has to be my most anticipated film of 2020. Dude. It, for it, sure. It, it, I'm fucking keen as shit, man. Yeah. And I, I cannot wait to see this. I love looking up the Event Cinemas app and seeing how many fucking sessions there are for this. It's like, yes, I love it. Yeah. And after the last experience of Mel Gibson on the big screen with Force of Nature. And he was probably, Dude. He was probably the best thing about that film as well. It's 2020 and we're seeing Mel Gibson twice in one year on the big screen. Right. What the fuck is wrong with the world? And Mel Gibson- but right about the world. I know, right? Mel Gibson's like <laughs> moving to his strengths in this film. I guess. Like, no, this this one, honestly, it- Okay, Force of Nature screamed straight to DVD. Yeah. This one actually screams big picture. Yeah. Like, it, it just looks- Maybe we're just delusional because we haven't had huge options this year, but- Maybe. Dude, I'm- Yeah, I'm all about this. This dude, is the excited. This, this is our next YouTube review. If this was coming out, like, in a regular climate, I would still be jazzed because I like <laughs> Mel Gibson. Yes, he's had his ups and downs and he played his, mm. his Nick Cage status where, like, he does a lot of those director DVD style films. Mm. But the dude has chops and- I, I, I like Mel Gibson. Dude, honestly, Walt, Walt on Goggins this. sells this for me more than Mel Gibson. Okay, well, but yeah, for considering me Mel-, Mel Gibson is our YouTube little secret, yeah, you know, I'm sure. keen as hell for this. I am yes. absolutely keen as hell. So we will be seeing Fat Man for next week's DTCR on YouTube. That's right. But, but ladies and gentlemen, that has been our show. That is correct. You can certainly find us on mm. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, mm-hmm. all at 2C3Pod, mm-hmm. but mainly Facebook and Instagram. 
all oh. of that jazz. Facebook, we live stream this this podcast right now. So if you're listening to this on a platform, which we'll get into in a moment, yes. if you want to watch us live and interact post and pre-show, feel free to go on Facebook, 2C3Pod, and also my Twitter, uh, my Twitch account too, which we'll talk about in a moment when Mitch stops fapping over there about it. Ectoplasm, um, my friend. That's right. <laughs> I can't believe that carried through the whole show. I know, but right? anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, make sure it's on your preferred platform. We're available on every fucking podcast platform you yep. can think of. Just search 2C3Pod, simple as that. And if there's a way to review, follow, uh, rate, subscribe, any of that kind of stuff, it would be greatly appreciated, especially Apple Podcasts, five stars. Thank you very much. Please. But we have a cliche slogan, of course. Podbean, Podbean Spotify, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts and of course, YouTube. YouTube big some more. And of course, if you want to support us additionally by buying a little bit of merchandise, you can certainly do so uh, over at TeePublic and Redbubble.com. You don't need me to tell you what's over there. You can what? guess. It's on a t-shirt and shit like that. Exactly. Uh, but most importantly as well, if you do want exclusive 2C3 pod benefits like oh. additional bonus oh. content, stickers and oh. accreditation on our episodes. Early Jack uh, episodes. That's right, mm. of course. Patreon. That's right. Just search 2C3Pod. And out of all of those benefits that you get, the most important one is you get a shout out. That's right. And we are going to do that right now for our lovely heroes and bloody legends. And I will just preface by saying I forgot to do nicknames this week. So the That's previous right. patrons from the previous week get their nickname from that episode. So we have Alice Reddit. Thank you so much. Courtney Harris. Thank you so much. Gingerly. Thank you so much. Hypnosil. Thank you so much. Parks and Degradation. Caesar. And our newest patron, Dodgy Blade. Thank, thank you so you much everybody. for your support. We appreciate you so much. And as we say on Patreon with all of our bonus episodes, thanks for your money. We yes. appreciate it greatly. It comes into the giveaways and stuff like that. So thank you. Of course. Any other further inquiries, of course, 2C3 po- uh, <laughs> two's company, three's a podcast at gmail.com. And not only that, for PayPal. That's right. Flick us 10 cents, 20 cents, 50 cents, one million dollars. Whatever goes in there comes back to helping us that's right of course in terms of like donations <laughs> in terms of your donations whether it is through paypal or your support on patreon mm. etc all mm-hmm, of that money mm-hmm, does go mm-hmm. back to you in some form or another because the end of the year is coming up which mm. means sooner enough we will have christmas giveaways that's again right. this year ho ho happy I said that on Patreon. <laughs> okay. And I thought you might have remembered. No. Ho, ho. Happy. Ho, ho. Happy? That's okay. Right. Am I supposed New to teacher? be? teacher? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. If it catches on. But um, yeah. So Hashtag. where was I going with that? Oh, uh, yes. Christmas giveaways. Now, yes. this last year, we had a great Christmas giveaway of four event cinema gift mm. cards valued at $50 each, which oh. obviously people have the chance to win when they enter the contest and we draw their names out. That's right. We haven't fully discussed what we're going to do this year there just yet, but we are opening it to international winners Woo! that's right because we now have grown a little bit uh to a wider audience internationally so if you do want to be a part of that don't be afraid to do so don't think it's australia only but we'll no. get more information to you fairly soon absolutely but speaking about getting new things to you fairly mm. soon we've got a new podcast episode every single week releasing at 2 a.m australian eastern standard time on oh. thursdays with news and reviews, what we've watched at home, Trailer Park and Yasuo Pass, and sometimes streaming services, thirsty recommendations. I just forgot to do it this week. That's okay. But yeah, just like you've witnessed, we have a new podcast episode every week. You can certainly Layout. check it out on those platforms we said earlier. But and also, as we just discussed with Yasuo Pass, we do have YouTube. Big, Big summer, summer blowout. Two C3 pod. Search it up on there. Subscribe. Ring that gosh darn bell because we have DTCR does the cinema every single week. We just mentioned that we're going to see Fat Man. So look out for that review coming soon. But not only that. For sure. The, the next video that we'll have on there on the homepage will be a double Blum, Blumhouse review yep. of Craft Legacy and, of course, Freaky. So That's make right. sure to look out for that. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Excellent. Now, of course, as well, if you are into Twitch gaming and you want to follow and watch us do that sort of stuff, you can certainly find me over on twitch.tv forward slash Dylan2C3pod for the occasional fast-paced FPS action shooter content. Occasional? Occasional? No. Yeah, at least once Mm. a week. Yes, and Mitchell2C3pod on Twitch for myself. That's right. Thank Mm. you, everybody, for tuning in. It's been a wonderful week. We'll see you possibly next week, most Mm. likely. My name is Dylan, and as always, with my co-host, Mitchell. And do not forget, we are Two's Company, and and you are the podcast. podcast.
I got this and I was like, wait, am I going to? I was about to say, yeah, that I realized we both would have just <laughs> seen. Yeah, I know, I know. But I, I but, oh man, this was made for me. But anyway, thank you for sticking around. Post closing song. We do have our weekly trivia where the scorecard is incredibly embarrassing. But just know I have a one point lead at this stage. That's and right. And with only about six less than. Yes. Maybe six. Six, or, or six so. episodes to go. Something like that. Yeah. Everything is riding on these questions. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Take That's it away. right. Okay. Mm. So just to quickly recap on what the prize is at oh, the very course. end, these questions are going to last us up until the end of the year. And mm-hmm. whoever the winner is of the trivia shouts, the other person, full expenses paid, oh. trip to the VMAX, gold, gold class, class, whatever it's- Yeah, sorry, Don't gold skip. class. <laughs> gold <laughs> class cinema experience Absolutely. to the film that's out that week, of mm, course. Mm, mm. Okay. Question for Mitchell. Oh, God. In the movie Bullet, oh. what American muscle car does Steve McQueen drive? Take a stab at old school. Mm. Is it a Corvette? No. A Mustang? Oh, come on. Sure, you were having a stab in the dark there. It's a Ford Mustang GT. Do I get that? Yeah, Is that you okay? Can that, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> motherfucker. Awesome. All right, now I'll be, I'll be disappointed in you if you don't get this. Okay? Fucking hell. I, I would have cut you off, basically, okay. to get this one right. In Wayne's World. Oh, shit. I'm going to be so disappointed. Wayne and Garth would make a special noise when they see a hot girl. Oh, what is it? Swing. There you shwing, go, my man. Shwing. Thank you. Good. We both got one right. Yes. That rarely happens. Fucking Excellent. A. Love Absolutely. to see it. Woo. Thank you, everybody who's tuned into this podcast. We'll be back next week. Make sure you hit the subscribes on all of those platforms. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'd like you. Yeah, we'd come back do. again. Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm.